and I am live so welcome 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 I hope everything is okay with the sound uh, for some time now I had a delay well, a couple of streams ago I had a delay in it with the sound so if anyone can confirm that isn't the case that would leave me assured that well we can continue and today it's gonna be quite fun because we're gonna be talking about RCs and yeah RCs are fun for a couple of reasons but also uh, they're quite educational for many different reasons that might not strike you at first. So in this live stream we're gonna focus on RC stuff like cars, drones and what not. I hope you are guys ready. I have a bit of a coffee to, to well get me through the day or evening. And well I have toys or well, do we call them toys? Do we call them models? Do we call them projects? I think they're projects and I'm going to explain why. So in today's live stream we're going to cover a couple of products. We're going to cover a RC car which I already started to tinker with and I'll explain why RC cars are such a great project and you should consider getting one. Even if you like me old and you should not be playing with RC cars. And then we're going to move to drones. I have two drones now. One is FPV drone and one is a drone that has a lot of electronics preventing it from crashing. And I'll talk about differences between it and we're going to jump also to a FPV simulator and I'll show you how hard it is to uh, try it. I've uh, only had like five minutes and you, you, you're going you're gonna to be entertained by this, definitely. So welcome everyone. Do let me know if the sound is okay guys because I see some people already watching. So if the sound is uh, on point, we'll start. If not, I'll quickly fix and swap my microphone and we'll continue. So I hope you're going to enjoy this live stream. We're going to be live for about uh, I say an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So uh, let me just start up. So this live stream is going to also be presented on Banggood. So if you're shopping on Banggood, you'll see it. And uh, one of the uh, Banggood is basically sponsoring uh, items that you're going to be seeing on the live stream. So if you tap that, go ahead. If you're not, well, that's your choice to make. But one of the things that uh, those are toys for boys. <laughs> of course, they are toys for boys. Uh, one of the things I promise I'm going to mention uh, is the uh, Black Friday crazy sale. And the fact that you can use Klarna to split your... Uh, purchases. So um, if you are shopping for something expensive and you want to split the price, for example, let's say you want to get something like this car, which I have in here. If you would like to get one and you want to split it into much preferred installments, you pay no interest for three installments and you can get that much cheaper. So yeah, and that is in fact Oh, awesome. Thank you, Smart Nidam. I do appreciate it. So that is, the, in fact, the first thing we're going to talk about. And this is a 116 RC car, uh, which is from Z, uh, ZD Racing. It's available on Banggood. And now it's on sale. If we hop into my desktop, you'll see that this car is on sale where I have it. Um, just having my orders in there. And jump to my orders. I bought a lot of stuff recently. Ah, so in UK it's not on sale, but uh, in other countries right now you might actually see it as low as seventy pounds. So do shop around, and uh, well, you will see the price corresponding to your location. So this is the car we're going to talk about, which is behind me, and we're going to have a closer uh, look at it. So without further ado, let's put it on my table and. Sounds like stereo channels out of phase. Voice sometimes comes not from the center of the speaker. Is that even? I think I'm kind of like talking to the side of the microphone. Maybe that's why. Uh, there's not much I can do about it uh, uh, unless uh, we can go pro. Uh, if that's the case, guys, uh, forgive me one second. I'll quickly switch over my microphone so you can get a perfect uh, sound experience. I was hoping that's not going to be the case, but if, if that's the case, I can quickly fix it because I have everything's ready to plug my spare microphone and I fully charged it. So uh, give me one second. Uh, I'll get into. Okay. 
terrified that my microphone is going to uh, let me down and I don't want this to happen, so... Bloody hell! I don't know if you can hear that outside, but there's a massive, massive storm outside. So... Right, okay. And... You... Okay. Is that better, guys? I'm probably too loud right now. That should be better. Uh, I just need to also add it to different views, so give me one sec. Yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, that should be fine as well. So, without further ado, I left you waiting for too long. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the car and I'll tell you, uh, tell you why this is actually a great project if you're getting started with stuff. So, uh, this is a, like I said, this is a RC car and we're just gonna put it on the, plop it on the desk and we're gonna take a look inside. Right. Huh? I think my camera is uh, frozen as well for some reason. Uh, SP video. I can't see live feed from my camera. Why is that? Oh, we, we got a. We have. Sounds like we have a lot of technical issues today. Uh, okay, just bear with me one second. Trying to fix this. No. Oh, it's t today it is complaining. Switch it over. Um, okay, I need to reset this. Sounds like the feed from the camera is frozen for some reason. Uh, come on. Ah. There we have it, okay. Apologies. Right, so this is a scale 116. If you just want to know how big it is, uh, this is how big it, like I'm not going to do this because uh, that way it's not going to give you any scale. But this is the scale of the car, so it's like as big as my chest really. It's, I think it's a, one of the best scales to play with because it gives you a lot of actually space inside to make some modifications. And the car itself, uh, I'm not a big fan of shells because they are not very detailed. However, that wasn't my priority. My priority was getting the guts right. And by default, it comes with this controller, which is three channels, actually, even though the, the car itself has two channels. And uh, so um, channels are basically, for, uh, first of all, obviously controlling the turn and then controlling the throttle. And this uh, controller, it's very nice and comfortable to use. However, it's already not working because I disassembled it and I've changed the controller. And I'll explain why. But first, we need to open the car and inspect the guts. So the shell pops out quite easily. You just uh, remove security pins and then you can replace the shell. Now, <laughs> you can already see that uh, I've been quite, quite harsh with this car with some uh, bumps already present, there's a plastic bits missing. Obviously I've been crashing it all over the place trying to do a few things. Uh, but yeah, but I'm planning actually to design a 3D body for it and print in different parts so it could be reprintable once I get better with it. But that leads me to a first conclusion. This is a actually a toy, but it's also a project, right? You can learn so much stuff and gives you a direction into a couple of things. So first, you can work on the body, body of the car. You can, if you have a 3D printer, I always looked for a project you can start modeling and learn how to modeling different uh, parts of the car to create a rather unique shell rather than using those pressed shells that are void of details and uh, they're not very entertaining even though they have some LED strips but I don't know why it doesn't look that good I actually have some uh, I have some footage of the car driving on the beach and I'll show you in a second but first I'm going to tell you a little bit about this car as you can see there are a couple of elements in here there is a battery which should be really disconnected uh, 
So it comes with a 1200 milli milliamps battery. You probably want to buy a couple of them or uh, get another one, uh, bigger one if you want. It comes with 380 brushed motor. Brushed is okay, I know everyone raves about the brushless, but brushed is fine uh, for driving uh, cars because, well, it, it does the job. Now, and then you have a steering which is uh, based on servo. So, now this car is a four-wheel drive and you can see that from the shaft in here. Let's uh, zoom, out, zoom in a little bit and uh, let's inspect a little bit of guts. So you can see that the car has a four-wheel drive. There is a shaft that goes they're all across the entire um, length of the chassis. And you also have a differential. See, if I turn one, uh, one wheel and the other one spins the other way around, that's the easiest way to. And differential applies to both, uh, both axes. So that's cool. Now the body and the entire structure is made out of aluminum, which uh, gives it a little bit of weight. The weight is something that you should keep low, but also you should have a little bit of weight to actually play with cars so they can get better uh, traction. And it has independent spring-loaded um, suspension, which, which is pretty cool. And uh, it uh, causes the car, well, it suspends the car, but it also has a nice effect when the car, when dropped, it doesn't bounce. Like if you had a normal car, it would just bounce and uh, move away, but, uh, you'll see that it just lands flat like a pancake. So, uh, speaking, uh, speaking of upgrades, uh, I need to reach out to a box of parts to uh, get uh, uh, the original part. I think it was somewhere here. Oh no, sorry, it's, uh, it's out there. I'm just gonna, gonna reach it out. So that was the original, uh, that was the original ESC with receiver, and that has only two channels with extra power for whatever you want to power, but it was used to power LEDs. Now, that wasn't enough for me, and I wanted to swap this, and here is why. First of all, a car like this, you probably want to add extra things, right? You can start, like, this is RC, but it doesn't have to be RC. Uh, there are already libraries that you can use with Arduino to intercept whatever you are sending from the controller and do extra stuff with it. And we have a, a RC league at work where people are actually playing with RC cars and making them into something special. So you can add, for example, an Arduino and accelerometer to introduce, uh, I don't know, brake lights. So when the car is slowing down, your brake lights will apply. You can go uh, further and apply um, indicator controls for, with the same thing, using just the acceleration and direction of the acceleration to indicate which the car is steering. Well, that's one of the things. One other thing you can actually do is you can use Arduino to intercept uh, whatever you're doing with your controller and uh, correct for it. So you could have profiles that uh, trim uh, your steering angles based on the speed. So the quicker you go, the less sensitive the speed, uh, steering is. And suddenly a toy turns into a quite sophisticated uh, project that you can play with. Now, this is the beauty of it. Uh, obviously, I've not got the Arduino on it yet, but uh, this is something I'll be definitely adding in the future. Uh, for now, I did two things. First of all, I added six channel receiver. You can see it in here. Now I'll just zoom in for you a little bit more. So this is a six channel receiver and obviously I only have populated two channels right now. And why did I add it? Because I gone away with this. I wanted to be able to control the lights and do all the fancy stuff, but I needed more than two channels, which wasn't supported by this uh, two, in mod, uh, two in one receiver and ESC. So in order to make it work, I needed to buy the six channel receiver and uh, the ESC to drive it. Now 380, if you ever want the 380, this is a diameter of the, uh, mm, uh, the cylinder from the, for the uh, motor. Uh, this ESC, for this motor in particular, you would need anything between 20 and 30 amps. That's a suggested one. And if you're looking to get a couple and have more access to control later, then for example, if you wanted to have a VR video controlled by a servo, so you feel like you are inside the car itself, then you're probably going to need another um, channel. Now, the uh, re reason I'm doing this is because I am controlling my car with a uh, FlySky controller now instead. 
So uh, this controller, this is a second thing that's been sent to me by Banggood and I'm just going to uh, share um, the link with you. Just give me one second. Doo -doo -doo. It comes actually with a FPV drone from uh, Ishin, I think that's how you pronounce it. But you can buy the controller separately and this is a six channel controller. So if I power it on, you'll see, I was playing with switches, you will see that uh, I can control actually this car and if I'm gonna get a battery in, This way. If we're gonna get battery in and then change the model uh, to let's go to this fly sky two. How do you, how do we do it like this? And then go OK. Model select. Uh, we want model one. And then hold cancel to select it. I know it's counterintuitive. Yeah, we have a one. Now I'm just gonna lift it just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere because I'm just getting started with everything. But if I'm gonna power it on. Okay, we should be able to control it yet, maybe, yes. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. There, there is work to be done in here, guys. There is work to be done in here. God, that was loud, I do apologize. Okay. Um, I think you need to reset the power after you change that. Uh, come on. Ah, now we're controlling it. So. Okay, I've remapped the controls because I was using it on a drone. So that's one of the reasons, but you can see, you, you can see I can, I can, ah, this, this one is here. You can see I can, use uh, the controller right now to control it. Now this, I'm still learning about this controller because it's complicated. It has a lot of different features that I'm fully to grasp yet because, well, it's my first RC toy. I never had that RC toy in my life. So I'm super excited and uh, I'll show you how fun it is to drive since uh, you probably want to see that as well. Uh, let me just uh, prepare the footage for you and you'll be able to take a look at a bit of a driving experience that I did. So let's jump to desktop and let's uh, hide this, not this one, let's hide this. So this is me just uh, running behind the car. Uh, so I'm already running quite fast behind the car and the car can just Yo. accelerate anytime it wants. So it was actually quite fun to do it. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, my driver was constantly uh, running away from me and uh, you can tell, you can tell. But uh, uh, even, especially on the sand, even though you have to clean the car later because the, the mm, sand will gonna get everywhere, it was quite fun to, to play with the car and the car uh, drives uh, like a champ. I have uh, another video in which I'm gonna do some power turns, so I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's switch over uh, to that. Uh, let me find a video for you. Uh, but uh, the car has a range of 100 meters and if you just want to play it like uh, it is a toy then go for it and uh, play like it is a toy. But if you want to do something fancy then like I said it is a project you can build it up you can my next step is to add the uh, first person control uh, video camera and 3D print, print a cockpit so I could use the headset and I can actually steer the car over, uh, you know, steer the car from inside. That's going to be quite, uh, quite fun. Okay, uh, where's the other car? Ah, yeah, found it. Okay, so this video. Uh, just align it, desktop. So the car is here, it's gonna be approaching in a second and uh, 
yeah, I had a lot of fun with it, and uh, it drives like a champ. Like I said, on the on the sand, you can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I'm not even uh, using it in a full throttle. You can trim the throttle how fast it goes, so you don't overspin. But it's really great to control, and you can skid on the tarmac as well. I'll show you in a second uh, too. There's uh, another clip when I'm just uh, gonna. Let's not make the same mistake. Turn off the cow up. Okay. And I'll be driving, I guess, into the... Yeah, that was quite fun to do. So yeah, uh, driving, driving the car on the beach was absolutely amazing. But nothing stops you, uh, right, from turning this car into a... Um, into a um, self-driving um, machine. You can put a Raspberry Pi on it, use the camera, connect the camera to... Uh, servo because it uses the servo and you can take over from that and you can have so many experiments So you can think about the car like this not as an RC toy But you can think about it as a robotic a robotics project or, or robotics kit. So instead of buying a s slow uh, and bit not exciting um, You know Raspberry Pi kit for robotics or driving around you get RC car you get best of the worst you get, you get to take it out uh, and spin it around and you know do whatever you want or you can disassemble it and make it your own make a modification raise something i don't know 3d print a nice body add bigger engine and learn how to code uh, the electronics for it because you can intercept what you can do you can actually intercept the signals coming from rc and you can modify them uh, with uh, for example arduino or the boards to your needs and that's going to be really cool way to get yourself into programming and get yourself into um, designing something cool so that's uh, one of the things that you can do and uh, it's what's what I wanted to do with uh, this project myself because I thought like that's going to be cool to add extra controller and even though this is not the most convenient way this is the most convenient way to drive the car like this because uh, you have uh, it's just easier to ste steer and I don't know why they put uh, uh, like a, a tires on here or something instead of steering wheel but uh, it's a it's a common common thing that they do on these controllers so yeah you can get a car like this and build on top of it and uh, there's some cool stuff coming uh, and then get a probably six channel controller and that will give you a lot of things to, to play with including a uh, server for the cameras or, or lights etc etc so that is the item number one and this is why i think if you're playing with uh, rc cars it's totally worth upgrading i have a couple of uh, i have a couple of links that i'm going to share with you guys so uh what i uh, what i bought so far just switch over to my so what i've bought so far that's uh gonna work quite well first i want to change how the throttle works on uh, on my controller by default the control in here you have one sticky uh let me just show you uh, you have one sticky um this is a throttle yeah and the joystick sticks in a position and this one just bounces back but uh, you can customize it you can swap them around but i want to have the ability to swap them so i bought a spare one and you can just plug it in and i will be able to have both of them being springy in both axes so that's one of the things i bought and this is uh, and this is one of the items i would recommend you to get i'm gonna paste it in here and this is a spare stick All right uh, another thing that I got, obviously, uh, that was uh, straight away, were extra batteries. Uh, because uh, it, the car batteries last about 20 minutes. And believe me, when you're having fun, uh, 20 minutes is not enough. My trip to the beach was actually quite fun because I was, uh, uh, I had a plan to shoot some stuff from a drone and then from stationary cameras and stuff like that. And I ran out of batteries, so I got some extra batteries that you should uh, really consider as well uh, because uh, they're going to extend the playtime and those are not very expensive and they use exactly the same battery time as my model so I got another two of them and lastly for my upgrades I got uh, the ESC uh, which is 30 so that's ESC, it's going to be translating your signal from receiver and uh, this is for brushed motors uh, for 30 amps uh, and it will be driving your motor. Uh, you should, like I said, motor is less than 30 amps, but you should have a bit of a headroom. 
and the six channel uh, controller. So by the way, those things I bought out of my volition because I wanted to take the project further. Uh, so I got a six channel controller so I could add lights, I could add extra controllers, etc., etc. So, and there's one more small video I would like you to show you, which is this one. Uh, you can see it, yeah. So that was filmed with 360 camera. And this is, this is basically how, how maneuverable the car is and how much, how fast it can go. Uh, it wasn't s like I had to trim the speed, otherwise it would spin out on the tarmac. But yeah, I had a plenty of fun just playing with the car and uh, crashing it and making a jump. I did a couple of crashes mostly because I was getting used to the controls, especially uh, when the controllers was when that was my controller because I wasn't used to the fact. And at first, uh, the channels I've selected were weird channels for controlling this and. Yeah, was driving in an enclosed space and ramp a couple of times inside, uh, inside the hack space into the wall and whatnot, and that resulted in this lovely uh, scar in the front. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the item number one, and I would strongly recommend you to get a car if you're looking for a, a project because it's fun and uh, there are so many things that you get to understand on how. Uh, how driving inductive motors works and how to prevent your battery from... Oh, there's one more link, which is a LiPo charger, which I would also recommend. Let me just... So this LiPo charger, I would also recommend because it's awesome. And sooner or later, if you're gonna have different RC cars or different RC models, you'll have uh, you'll end up with different batteries. And this has a cap capability of uh, charging lot of different batteries which are listed in here so uh, it's a it's slightly expensive but it's a really good and recommended and it's also on sale uh, charger so moving on uh, the next thing it's gonna be drones right and I'm gonna start with a, a bit of a throwback which is the first drone I was flying the first drone I was flying was this this is Femi uh, Femi S-E-X-8 and it's a really cool drone, right? I've wrote a review about it and if you want to know all the features and uh, and everything and it comes with a controller for the mobile device or even tablet because it stretches so far uh, then I have the full review, right? And uh, I will show you the review And that was the first drone. And what I'm getting with this is that these drones are easy to fly, right? You really don't have to do much with it. You can just... Uh, there is auto start and auto landing. The control for the most part, the control is very forgiving and the drone, as long as you're not going to you know, run it straight in building, it will keep the drone easy to operate in a position and you can focus on learning, practicing and taking uh, videos. And if you want to have a look at the video and I'll show you what kind of videos you could expect from this. I have a big uh, a library of videos from the drone. Uh, so let's uh, have a look what we've got in here. Uh, As actually, we can do it from here. In this video, I expect drone jousting, crashes, and pretty good footage as well. Not going to run the drone so, intentionally. Uh, I was, uh, I was having fun with the drone, and uh, I was uh, crashing it from time to time because so why not? Uh, it's actually survived my two crashes. Those I, I managed to film each time. The tree was uh, responsible for the crash, but uh, yeah, it was quite. Uh, quite fun to you know fly around and uh, shoot shoot stuff like this. It's just dead easy and dead cinematic to shoot stuff like this. So if you're looking for something easy to learn and where you can focus on um, you know capturing stuff, it's it, it's just plug and play. I'm, I have about 24, 25 hours of fly time in total, 
and I feel pretty confident with this drone. Which leads me to the next step that the drone I really wanted to talk about, which is FPV, because FPV it is something I really wanted to get into. Now, I knew that FPV is nothing like flying this. Obviously, you're gonna have a um, headset. So I got uh, Banggood to send me a drone, a controller, which you've already seen, and a headset. So let's get them on the table. Ooh. <sighs> now, these things are scary. These things are scary because, by default, they don't really have that much um, electronics that will help you fly. They are, on the surface, they are very stupid. Basically, they will respond to whatever you're gonna do with your controller. And I'll send you the link for that, and we're gonna take a closer look at what I've got in here. So let's start with, uh, let's go to a desk, and I'll send you the, so this is the drone. It's one of the entry drones, maybe I should name it. Was it FPV? It's one of the entry FPV drones, and uh, it's probably where you want to start because those things are manic. Those things are manic and dangerous. <laughs> so, full disclaimer I have no a clue how this performs because I'm yet to fly it. Uh, there are a couple of things that uh, stop me from flying it right now. I work till sunset, which it's very early in UK, which means only weekends, and last weekends weren't really inviting in terms of trying things out. So I didn't have a chance to actually take it for a spin because, well, you're not going to fly FPV at night or learn to fly FPV at night. This is the worst idea ever. Now, why these are different? Obviously, you're going to need goggles. I have these goggles. These are Cobra Skyzone, uh, Cobra SD goggles, which have a couple of cool things. And I'll FPV goggles. I'll link them so you could take a look. So what's cool about, let's start with the goggles itself. The goggles are pretty simple. There is a screen. There is no motion controls, even though you can add motion control to your head movement and rotation. Uh, and you'll see the feet coming out from this camera, which is set at the angle. That's the principle, right? You're gonna get an analog video, which means the further away you are, the signal will degrade, and FPVs are meant to be flying, um, flied closed, flown close to, um, to you. Like, with this drone, I had a range of 8K. That's not going to happen with a FPV drone. You're probably gonna be uh, flying it within a couple of hundred meters at best. So, in inside you'll see that you can power it from the battery. There's a nice battery compartment for the 18650 inside. Or you can power it either from USB Type-C, which is a socket in here. Uh, can I zoom in? Um, I'll give you a better overview. So you can power it from USB Type-C, or you can power it from the DC jack. Now, you have uh, also a couple of uh, useful features. First, if you're not using... Um, this as a drone visor, you can plug in HDMI or audio video, which means you'll be able to get uh, feed in and display it on the screen. That's nice. You can also stick the USB, um, SD card and record the footage that is being sent. Obviously, that's going to be prone to any uh, signal degradation. What you get on this device is what's going to be recorded. So if you want to record something, you probably want to add a, um, a camera on the drone. Uh, and in here you have handy buttons because uh, once you have this on your head, you're not going to see anything. So you have many options to scan the for the frequency and control uh, the on-screen display and the power and the menu button. So that's it. The headset is not too heavy. It's quite comfortable and it sits in there, comes uh, with antenna. If you want to upgrade your range or something, there is in here a compartment in which you can uh, upgrade your receiver. So it's, a, it's a also a beginner's friendly headset, it's a, it has enough features to get you in GH for, for a long time before you feel like having a need to upgrade, and it's not that expensive. Uh, but what I was doing for the last week, I was basically practicing my flying in a simulator. So I was able to either uh, control, uh, connect my co computer through HDMI in and uh, display the game in here, and basically feel like I'm actually flying a drone. Oh, I could just, I 
uh, connect the controller and uh, play using the controller on the screen. So those are options available. Now, now that you know everything you need about the uh, goggles itself, let's talk about drones and why these are deadly machines. Now, first advice, don't put the props on indoors. Uh, these things are unpredictable. If you power them on, they can spin up a little bit and etc. So if you're not ready to fly, make sure that the props are probably the last thing you want to put on it, especially if you're going to connect this to a PC. Now, it has a the, the drone itself, uh, you'll see it has a couple of components. Obviously, you have brushless motors in here. You have ESC for each motor. Uh, let me just kind of like this. Uh, you have ESC for each motor. Then you have inside, and uh, there's obviously camera at the front. And inside you have the um, pancake of different boards. The top one is the um, video feed. So you've got your video controller. Now send the signal via this antenna and make sure this is plugged in and the antenna is plugged in when you power the drone. Otherwise you might burn the connector because all the output goes from the antenna when it's connected and you don't want to burn it over. The second board in here is the actual flight controller which is going to be responsible for driving the um, individual brush motors. And you can select different programs, you can change and tweak stuff in there. Uh, I'm yet to discover the potential of everything because, like I said, I'm still learning. Uh, but uh, you'll be able to modify how the drone behaves in the air as well, how responsive it is, and whether it uses any um, accelerometer data to dampen your movement or self-correct. Now, for the most part, these drones don't use anything. You basically uh, at the mercy of the controller. So whatever you're doing with the controller, the drone will follow. Uh, there was no auto leveling, so if you stick a stick slightly, it will twist the drone and it will stay in this position. While my Femi, if I release the stick, the drone basically returns to a neutral position in which it stays in the air and uh, it doesn't fall off. So this is where it gets difficult because for every action, you have to be ready to counter it and level the drone and make sure you're in full control, which is an art. And trust me, we're gonna see this is an art because I'm gonna give it a go in a simulator for you. Now, I would strongly recommend you that you actually try a simulator uh, because first, you want to get yourself familiar with the controller. Now, the drone itself, it's made out of carbon fiber and honestly, I would have to bang it with a hammer to destroy the frame, but there are obviously delicate elements and certain things can happen if this falls out of the sky. Your prop's gonna be gone, that's for sure. Your battery can leak and explode. Your <laughs> PCBs can be damaged and the cables might be broken, antennas, etc., etc. in the camera. So there's a lot of components that you can destroy. So I would, this is where I would strongly recommend you to spend like five to seven pounds on the simulator and practice it. Now, in order to practice it, you can do it with a keyboard, something I wouldn't recommend it, or you can do it with a controller that you're going to use. At the back of this controller, you have this nice uh, trainer uh, socket. Now, it's intended uh, to connect two controllers together so a person more experienced can take over your controls and level it or steer you, etc. when you are not doing that great. We can also use that to do other fun stuff like upgrading the firmware on this computer or using open source plugin because it's quite popular controller and people hacked it. And connect it to your PC as a USB device in which you'll be playing a um, game. So this is something we're gonna try and you're gonna laugh at me for doing because <laughs> I absolutely suck. Even though I'm capable of shooting quite decent footage with this drone, I am not convinced I would be able to take off and land in FPV mode using this drone without any guidance or assistance. It's a completely different game and if you've been flying drones like this for a while, don't be fooled. This is, this is, uh, this is something else and uh, just go and train first, trust me. So the earliest I will be able to fly this and properly review, it's going to be some, somewhere in the springtime when the days are longer and I had enough hours clocked on uh, the um, simulator but yeah but this is this is something that I, I would strongly recommend you to do and in order to control it yeah let me just disconnect the cable I'll show you the cable so the cable I've ordered uh, it was only a couple of pounds on Amazon and this is a cable that you get you've got that uh, extra uh, socket for this controller and there is a spare one that you use for different controller basically 
plug it in the bottom, it's not most optimal position, and then you plug it a USB end to a PC, and you're almost done. For the most part, you don't even need the drivers, so it's it's pretty well 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 done for for you know for playing with. And I'll show you now <laughs> how bad it is. So uh, there's a couple, uh, before we actually jump into it, I'll show you a little bit more about this uh, controller so you could kind of have an idea of how. Um, hmm. Each time I change this view, my camera on, on here freezes. I don't know why. No? My desktop, desk camera freezes. Uh, let me... Let me try to fix it again. That's that's a new thing. I've not had this problem before. Not not hundred percent sure why it happens. Uh, let's. Uh, it doesn't see. Is it because it's not getting enough power? Um. Let's try something. I think my webcam is uh, plugged into the same port and that's what causes the problem. So I'm going to disconnect the webcam, or reset the... Uh, reset the draw. And hopefully... Ah, this stream today, I'm having... Ah, oh. okay, yeah, don't know what happened there. But I can show you a couple of features on the controller itself so you'll understand a little bit better. So this is the controller, it has a couple of switches, those uh, will define how your uh, control acts. So you have uh, six channels. So those are two channels here, two channels here, and then two channels in here. Those are just analog uh, potentiometers, right? In addition to that, you have trims. So you can set uh, how how you trims your how you how you trimming your controls, and then a couple of options. Now you can support I think six different models in here and you can configure this in the menus. If you press on OK, you will get into menu, you have a system and setup menu, and they'll offer lots of different options. Now to enter the menu, obviously click OK, then up and down to select what you want to select. Um, you will see you can update the firmware, etc., etc. Uh, and to approve something, you have to hold cancel. This wasn't clear at first, but uh, you have to hold cancel to approve it something. So uh, right now I need to select the second profile, which was uh, for uh, flying, uh, for using the simulator. So that's my second profile. And all the setups I did, it's gonna be saved. I've swapped some X's and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So to accept it, now click that, then uh, come out and we can uh, go to different menu in here to show you other options so you can reverse the sticks you can uh, sub trim via a software you can um, um, do s curves for the uh, for the curve uh, for curves for your controls etc it's really powerful tool so you'll be playing with this and setting it up for a long time so right now i've made the settings so let's uh, reset this let's go back to default yes second one and let's connect it to a PC and let's give it a go, right? And obviously my USB... Uh, not working. Okay. Ah, so I'm just going to plug that in and we're gonna launch... We're gonna launch... We're gonna launch this. Uh, I hope I don't have to restart it. Ah. Right, it is connected. It is connected. Now you can you can laugh at me, guys. It's okay to laugh at me. We're just gonna go through freestyle, and we can uh, pick ourselves like a map. Uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll go to the controller setup first. So there's a couple of things you have to do. I can I have 
you can see that the controller is working already. Can I display the controller for you guys? Let me do that. So you could see my controller. Okay, so you can see that the controller is working with the game right now, and uh, yeah, uh, in order, uh, you can go through calibration, but there's only a couple of things that you have to be mindful. Man manual calibration will basically ask you to do stuff, uh, but uh, if you go to channel selection, this is the, this is where it's important to map, so you'll have uh, when you move uh, your sticks, it will display on this, you know, and display which one you're moving. Now you'll notice that those green bars aren't in the center, and it, don't worry about it because this game allows you to correct for that, and this is normal. So uh, I've assigned some controls in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick to this uh, control scheme, but this is what I wanted to try. And if I go to input uh, trim, I'll be able to map my controls properly. So in this screen, you'll be able to counteract what, you, what I just did. So you can see my your axis right now. It shows that the, this this is max to the right, right? Uh, this is max to the left. I can just trim it slightly to match it. That's the maximum. And in mid mid, it's not in here where's the middle of the bar. For me, the mid is where the joystick is in the middle and I need to align this with here so I don't have it in a drift. So that's that's how you do it. And I can correct that for each axis. So this is the mid on throttle, which is, I set it to middle now, so I need to correct it slightly. And everything else uh, should be working right. That's great, that's fine, that's correct, and that is correct. So I'm fully safe and I can just uh, go and try it. So let's go and pick them up, right? Uh, something <laughs> something big that looks big which is gonna go freestyle now you have a different mode we're gonna go pro mode which is fully manual and it will show you how it, basically this works right and because it will just use the physics now don't expect any flying from me because honestly this is difficult So you have a try like a map overview we can skip this but i'm just gonna let you see it uh, you have uh, obviously obstacles you can fly through and uh, all the professionals are going to be doing all the fun stuff but me i'm going to be trying to stay in the air because that's what i do okay so we we are flying already right so i already have a bit of a pitch in here so that's fun like it's easy because i haven't started to... can we loop it Hey, I've, that was my first loop. Okay, now you see when you when you're turning one side, you have to correct it with the other stick as well, because otherwise, uh, this is where I'm already having problems. And you can see this. I'm being very careful. <laughs> the fact that I didn't crash yet just just amazes me because uh, maybe it's it's just me being ah <laughs> okay <laughs> I didn't know which direction to, to get myself out nah. So the problem with this is when you turn one direction, the drone will change orientation in all three axes and it will not solve correct. So if I turn like this and I'll leave it, it'll just continue on this path and to level it, I'll have to maneuver around until I get the proper level, right? So this is, this is the difficulty of flying FPV. There is no correction and this is what lets you do all those fancy rolls like this. I saved it. Ah, which direction? I've lost. I've lost the balance. Okay, I'm not uh, lowered up. 
so there is this uh, and we fly through it ah we won't go to fly through it ah. <laughs> yeah okay so this is why I'm not flying in the real uh, with a real drone, because I'm not there, I'm far from there. I've been uh, playing this game probably for like half an hour in total. And I still haven't figured out if this is my steering scheme I want to continue with. Uh, or not, so... Nah. There you go. I can do a flip as long as I don't... So the things that you should practice is just like stuff like turning and uh, circulating and keeping the drone level and trying to fly uh, into a direction. <laughs> so yeah, this is where the difficulty of flying in FPV comes in because it's, you're gonna struggle. There is no, you can, uh, you can uh, change the profile of your drone and you can have like auto leveling of, or, or, of some sort. But the drone's gonna fight you, uh, and uh, it's not the same way as on stuff like Fimi. And you have to remember that those drones, the FPV drones, they they don't play as nice. They are rough and gritty and difficult to control. Ah! Oh. I'm trying to ah. <laughs> so yeah, guys. This is this is what made. Oh, what was the restart? <laughs> you can laugh at me, like I said, I'm really bad. Oh, come on. Too close to the. Ah. Uh, I'm bad with it. I'm much better with the Phoebe drone, which you can see from all my videos. I'm gonna crush. Uh, but uh, this is probably also easier than flying an actual drone. Me and circulating things are not... I think for, for flying a throttle, I don't like the fixed, uh, fixed uh, way of having throttle. Because I can, like I said, turn it off or put it to max. And I can just ignore it and try to do like, stuff like that. So you'll notice when you change the direction, the drone leans and there is no correction for it, right? Which you have to do it yourself. So let's try around the crane, right? I'm gonna take it really steady and smooth, and I'm too close. <laughs> okay, I'm inside. <laughs> so this is why... Okay, let's, um, let's escape on this for a second. So this is why this is kind of difficult right when you when you have a drone like this and uh, when you have a drone like this this drone will doze all the corrections for you and you just when you pitch it pitch it forward and turn the drone basically what you'll do will pitch it will turn bank and then when you let go you'll reverse all of this automatically without you doing anything and this is great help uh, when you're learning how to fly while this, it will position itself as you instructed and it will not change that position. It will, the computer will try to keep this, in, uh, this drone in this position regardless. So you are the brains behind the operation. That's why it's so difficult to actually get uh, master this. But also that's why it looks so cool when you, uh, when you watch the videos on YouTube and everything is, you know, people get into those small spaces and they have that a really cool pilot mindset that is able to get them into those places. So if you're looking for an easy gateway, you have two choices, right? You can, on the first screen, it looks like you have some channel mixing configured in your remote. When you move your yaw, one of the other channels move too. Uh, I don't think that was the case really, it was my fingers, because uh, I am, uh, this is where, when you control a drone like this, right, what happens is, you have to learn 
to be able to move sticks up and down without going side to side uh, on accident. Obviously, if you want to do it, then it's fine. But one of the things you have to you have to remember about that uh, you have to also train your fingers to make sure that you're mixing channels when you're supposed to be mixing channels and the controllers are like like this <laughs> these are forgiving it's actually believe me or not but uh, all what you're inputting in here is smoothed out by electronics and sent to a drone so the drone doesn't really get your raw input it will smooth out all the cross from from it and only like excess movements of on on these will be taken now you can set those trims on the controller like this you can absolutely do so and you can ignore any movements you know below like five degrees or something in whatever and that will help you but uh, you probably want to leave the you know the uh, how the controller responds to your fingers because once you master it then those small movements will be you controlling the drone and excessive movements gonna be exaggerated it's gonna be where you will set your drone to spin let's say or change 300 degrees per second instead or, or even more 800 so you could make flips and stuff like that so when you want to do a flip you just do this for like half a second or whatever it takes for the drone to complete the action and that's how the pro are setting this up they have uh, very delicate controls to like let's say 50 60 percent of the stick movement and then they crank up that control in a curve uh, when you have near the full movement of the stick so when they want to apply full throttle really quickly or you know turn the drone very quickly they can just do it by this and that's another like i said this is another level that i'm <laughs> i'm not going to reach anytime soon but you have to understand if you going to use fpv drones fpv it's not just looking at the drone through first person even though that's what really it means right it the fpv drones by default they those kind of drones by default they have very raw experience you could go for the dgi option which are gonna be basically a front-facing camera with a fpv drone and uh, you know and it'll do all the smoothing for you but majority of the drones they class as a, like a kind of raw racing drones that's gonna be basically very uh, demanding in in terms of what you want to get out of the drone so this is a a i don't know uh it's advan it's a, it's advantage because you will be able to do stuff you never will be able to do on, on a drone like femi but at the same time you'll crash a lot more and it takes confidence and the skill to perform those maneuvers and this is something that uh, you'll have to train, you'll have to practice and spend time and have commitment. So one of the reasons I, I ha I've asked for an RC car uh, to get, which was so I could have fun while I'm practicing. So I can turn, basically <laughs> my plan is <laughs> to have a new body, which is nice, which has uh, um windscreen for the camera has lights and everything then basically put all the optics from here we'll dig out the camera and uh, video feed inside and then uh, 3d print the cockpit so when i'm using actually the headset i will end up feeling like i'm sitting inside this car and that's going to be something that keeps me occupied while i'm spending hours uh, you know uh, learning how and um, how to fly the drones in FPV on the simulators and yeah I think if you're going to buy a drone winter it's not the greatest time to buy a drone like Femi it's not because you want to take it out and start shooting and flying but if you're gonna buy FPV and you've never used FPV drones before buy it in the winter because the weather's gonna be horrible you're not going to be flying around but you're gonna have incentive to spend all the time on the sims practice and get better for spring when the weather is slightly better more uh, you know you have more daylight after work etc on the weekends it's not raining and you'll have the skills and you have the hours in that you spend in mastering so this is one of the reasons why I said like until then I want to play with something I want to get this on the beach I want to have have some fun and do I have a footage of it crashing let's have a look I'll see if I have a, uh, I have I have some footage with the RC car I was trying to follow I'll, I'll show you it's not the greatest footage but uh, I did my best uh, so uh, let's uh, 
let's have a look. So I was trying to follow the car with a drone and uh, my driver was not behaving and just enjoying uh, herself for the most part, which was slightly annoying because I was trying to film something and uh, she wasn't listening. <laughs> well, she had a lot of fun driving the car. And even though I was trying to instruct it, okay, just go straight. No, she preferred to go and, uh, uh, you know, come on, I was trying to set myself. As I like, go straight. And I was like, no, I want to I start turning. I want to go, go and have fun. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was me trying to follow it with a drone. That wasn't an FPV drone. That was, uh, and that was just a normal one. You can see a bit of a light in here uh, from the car itself. It looks horrible at night because it's just glowing piece of orange. Uh, but uh, yeah, it drives fantastically and it's fast. Uh, and like I said, I was not able to, to keep it up with the drone. It was quite difficult. Uh, I was quite low as well. This is like 20, 30 centimeters above, uh, above the ground and the drone was forcing itself to land. Here I was trying to catch up with the... I can overtake the car, but it's uh, very hard to follow it. Uh, like I said, she, she had way too much fun with it. And uh, when I was wanted to play with it, I, I basically, I had uh, no battery left. it was it was it was really really entertaining to do it oh i think that was a quite good shot as well because i only have <laughs> like this is how cooperative uh, driving straight means so it's like nope i'm going to have fun i don't think the second one the second one is any better and uh, the second clip I literally have like a one good follow shot in like 20 minutes or something. And that was me fighting the drone, which constantly tried to land. Oh, this one. That was this one. <laughs> Lost it. Now we're getting very slow, but yeah, the, the car can go um, up to about um, uh, the car can go up to about 30 40 kilometers per hour without upgrades. But you can crank it up, you can have a turbo, nothing stops you. With, like, if you change the battery and how much power you deliver and the ESC, you would be able to boost it for a little bit and don't burn the engine in the ESC, but you would be able to drain the battery a bit quicker to get that power out and uh, take advantage of it with a special button on the controller. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things you can try and learn and it's actually, you know, it's a rewarding thing because at the end of the day you can just take it outside and have some fun and if you have more than one, which I strongly recommend you if you have kids, then you're not playing alone. And uh, yeah, uh, nothing stops you from, like I said, there's enough space in that scale to, to get um raspberry pines i can show you like i have a raspberry pi inside if you wanted to get a raspberry pi inside of this car it's absolutely no problem this is raspberry pi <laughs> the full one <laughs> right you could even go like this is this is more than you ever gonna need you could you could add it somewhere in here there's plenty of space and you could, i could even use the same shell just 3d printers if you wanted to use the uh, the latest raspberry pi the zero two uh, zero two, it's even easier and that's powerful enough to do most of it with the camera control and stuff like that. Slide, just keep it on here, just add standoffs or even zip ties and you sort it and you can have your Wi-Fi connected, um, IP camera or you could try, like I said, with analog, which I'm going to do. I'm going to gut this drone until I learn how to fly it on a sim and use audio system on, it uses five volts, use uh, audio system to have a feed from the windscreen while I'm driving and that looks gonna look fantastic when you use goggles so yeah it's it, this is why I think it's it's absolutely fun to get RC toys for projects they're not just toys uh, we used to think about them as a toys right we used to think that these things uh, you know it's for kids uh, like we all adults I'm like pushing 40 right 
I should not be having that much fun on RC car, but you you get to learn a lot. Instead of having like a kit, like uh, like a robotics kit that, yeah, it will drive. You like I have one somewhere there. It will drive. Hold on a second. So. So this is. <laughs> I'll tell you straight away which one I'd like to have. This is a Raspberry Pi driven uh, a car and this is not yet Raspberry Pi driven car, right? This travels with about, I'm not going to lie, maybe three kilometers per hour. <laughs> this does 10 times the speed. It's, it's absolutely manic. And yeah, you can put a camera like that on top of it. You can put all the obstacle avoidance sensor and you can use them to override RC controls. You can do all of that while having a really fun car to drive. I mean, this has a suspension and everything and it's cheaper than this. And all it takes really is just a couple of hours of your time to modify so you could have a really excellent control center, whatever you want. So. It's something that I'll strongly recommend you instead of getting a kit like this because at the end of the day, between the times where you, um, you know, working on stuff, you'll still get to play. So even if your project isn't just ready, you can just disconnect it with a cable or something and take RC for a spin and have some fun. Because, yeah, it's all about fun. So if you're looking for easy to fly drone, you have two options that I've tested. So this is Fimi. Um, X8SE 2020, which I reviewed, and I'll send you a link for the review. Uh, so this, this is the review, right? And there is a smaller version which has the same camera. It's a mini version. Uh, so it looks like this. It's uh, very similar in terms of performance, uh, a slightly shorter battery life, which is much smaller. And uh, the range is uh, slight, no, it's still like okay. K. It's fine, eight kilometers. Eight kilometers is more than enough. It's a really good drone. It's a basically a small version which fits into a pocket. Well, not pocket, but you don't have to take a separate bag to, to keep the drone in, which uh, frankly speaking, it's, this drone once folded isn't massive, but it's still, you know, it's a 750 grams plus this. It's a kilo of baggage to, to carry. And, but those are dead easy to fly. So if you're looking for a drone, if you want to get started, get something off the air, go for a drone like this. Uh, whether you want to get another brand, that's fine. It's whatever you can afford and whatever you think is good. Uh, but drones like that are dead easy to fly and you'll be doing circles within two hours of flight time. Now with the FPV, Honestly, until you clock like 15, 20 hours on a sim, don't even try because you're gonna waste your money. You're gonna crash and damage your equipment and uh, you're gonna regret that unless you had a previous experience. So it's, I know it's, a, it's a, not the greatest recommendation for live stream in terms of saying like, no, don't buy an FPV drone. But uh, yeah, it comes with a warning. Those are capable, absolutely monsters machines that will be able to fly everywhere and take you, you know, places, but uh, you have to know what you're doing. And I'll be first to admit that I haven't got a clue what I'm doing with these. And uh, uh, I have to say big thanks to Andrew from um, uh, Hackspace that gave me basic lessons on these and uh, what I should watch out for, which things I shouldn't be doing and etc. Because it's, it's helpful to have someone just tell you all that information and I'm definitely gonna have a short write-up about this and to which drone to pick and what you pay you should pay attention to because it's definitely worth having that intro. Uh, otherwise, you'll just select the first random thing and uh, end up unhappy. And this is always bad. So yeah, if you're gonna, if you, if you do it like me, you'll be happy. Get an RC car controller that you're gonna use for the drone and the RC car. And that way you can get best of both words. And that's why I've picked those items from Banggood so I could talk about it today. Um, right, I think that's kind of covers everything. If you just joined and you want to have any questions or you want me to, to kind of uh, 
take at, take a look at something really quick what I've covered in terms of this car or drones uh, ask a question right away and I'll still do a short recap otherwise I'm quite happy to answer any questions and I'll tell you what I'm working on currently um, so yeah that's 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 the deal there uh, I am working currently, uh, I promised myself a bit of Zigbee work because it's been a while since I did uh, home automation stuff and I'm, I know guys, um, there's been a couple of promotional posts from Banggood and 11.11 uh, and Black Friday sales and my regular content was kind of put on the side but I just wanted to finish this, uh, have my sponsors being happy so I could continue making videos and have money for projects and I promise you there are some really cool projects coming up including uh, how to automate uh, lights in conservatory, how to make the lights work with a, uh, a music and a couple of other things that you get to try new things. There are going to be some Alexa integrations and big massive write-up about Zigbee temperatures, Zigbee coordinators, which I'm getting different Zigbee coordinators. And maybe, not going to promise, maybe, maybe I even try home assistant. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. So yeah guys, all the links in the chat that you're going to see and in the description in this video, they are affiliated. So if you click and buy anything from through those links, I get a small percentage. Uh, I uh, always had with Banggood a great deal where I can slam their products and uh, say I'm not happy with it. Uh, they never pressed me to say anything I didn't like, so that's my disclaimer. Uh, but as it happens, I have a good taste in stuff that I pick. I never had problems with Banggood. Uh, they, uh, I didn't have a, p no, that's a wrong, that's a wrong, that's a wrong statement. I never had unresolved problems with Banggood's. Uh, there are a couple of items that I received that were, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, that was mostly small things. I think one of the things wasn't, uh, sorry, one of the things came in crashed in delivery. They re uh, they refunded me for that. And two orders weren't processed by them because they were constantly low on stock so they gave me some points and they cancelled my order and then refunded me so it was a bit annoying but uh yeah even though uh they sponsor me i buy stuff myself you can um can i you can see through my history that i'm actively purchasing stuff through them uh myself the drone here in here you can see it's sponsored uh so uh, I, I, and I'm quite happy. Like I said, all, all stuff has been always resolved with uh, customer service and I've uh, always been happy with them. So, um, yeah, if you're new to Banggood and never heard about it, uh, just, yeah, try them. I'm in an unlucky position where uh, I'm in UK and unfortunately due to Brexit, they've limited a lot of stuff that is available for UK market. So if you're in UK, you'll notice that if you switch over to a uh, shipping options, uh, this is the best way. Like, if I go on a Google, if I go on a Google projector, a Google search on Banggood projector, those are my choices right in here. But like, you could tell that they're a couple of projectors. Now, if I go on a search for 4K projector, I don't really have a single uh, 4K projector in here on the list. The, those those projectors are not 4K. They're capable of playing 4K content, but it's 1080p. But basically, there is no 4K projectors. Now, if I'm gonna switch this one to United States, and I go projectors, 4K. Look at this 4K projector, 4K projector, <laughs> 4K projector. There's a lot of stuff if you're in the UK, there's a lot of stuff you currently can't see because Banggood, I don't know what's the crack with it is to be honest, I think it's uh, the business decision where uh, some of the items available in European warehouses aren't available for shipping because of excess duties and they already paid you duties to ship stuff to European warehouses so they don't send them out and so they don't lose money. But yeah, we got shafted in, in the result, which isn't great. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I wish they would have more options from Chinese warehouse for UK so I can pay the duty myself and get items because uh, I'm often in a position when I'm finding something exciting and I am unable to buy it because it is on the bank, but it's not available for me to, to, to buy. 
So uh, a couple of cool things that I found on AliExpress. Uh, I'll show you. I'll probably share that with you guys, but uh, this, this, sorry, this one, this one I'm getting. So this is, this is interesting. Uh, uh, can I give you affiliated link? Not supported. Okay. Ah. Come back. So this is the interesting one. Uh, this is a Zigbee uh, thermostat. It has different configurations. So those are water, electric, heating, gas boiler. Now I'm getting a, a GA water heating, which is compatible with mine. But this is a Zigbee uh, unit, which directly controls your heating, updates via Zigbee, and I'm really curious, and it has room controls. You can see you can control up to six zones. So I can assign zones. Now, if you follow me for some time, you'll know that I have a very good DIY smart heating, a very good heating system, which I've made myself, which does a lot of cool things, including controls of individual rooms. Now, those rooms can be swapped for zones, but what I wanted to do, I wanted to have a physical thermostat that would interact with it. And this looks like it would, I'll send you a link. Uh, So this is uh, the thermostat we're looking at. And this is interesting one because uh, uh, you would be able to press stuff on it, send stuff via Zigbee to my node red, and I can process this information and apply to my home heating system and update it accordingly. Now, if, if they use the same protocol to update the information back, then I don't have to use Tuya's Tuya app in order to update the display and show what's on the display. And if I can do it manually via Node-RED in this case, then I can set uh, this via um, my Google Home or, or Amazon Echo Speaker, and it will update on this, including zones and uh, everything else, which I'm really, really curious about. So this is one of the things that it's coming over. Another thing was the display for the uh, uh, display for the Raspberry Pi Zero Two. I have a plan with it. I don't know if that's gonna work, but it's a touch display. It's a miniature touch display, and it's lovely. And uh, it's only ten pounds, and I really wanted to get it. So here you go. This is this is uh, the display. So this is another thing I was uh, kind of uh, looking at uh, getting. And unfortunately, none of these things are available through Banggood, so I can't just ask them to send it to me. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, this is the this is the price I have to pay for not be not well being in in UK right now. So it sucks big time. But yeah, but uh, I had absolute blast uh, just playing with cars, and uh, uh, with this I managed to jump it off the curbs and uh, wasn't damaged. It has a ah, one of the things I haven't mentioned is the spoiler, uh, the spoiler, the the not the spoiler, the bumper. Actually, it's it's matte proof. You can see this is a massive. This is made of foam. Uh, this is great. You can just run it full speed into a wall and it will survive. So yeah, I'm I'm having a good time. I still have six channels. <laughs> There's a bit of a. Uh, uh, bit of a, a sand I need to clean with the air uh, from my beach driving but I need proper mud covers on here if I want to do it on a beach so yeah but uh, another thing that uh, it's quite interesting it comes with a manual and I think uh, the manual itself it's worth uh, showing to you guys uh, because Because manual looks like oh, no, my my cam. Hello, camera. Follow me. Uh, because manual looks like this. So it has a complete breakdown of entire car. Like literally, there is everything. Every single part is described and told you what they've used, how they used it. So you can learn actually how to build cars, how to build uh, differentials, how to mechanically make a four-wheel drive. It's all in there and it's a, such a neat manual. It's the first time that actually I'm curious to leave this manual with me 
because I want to learn how this car been put together and you know and modify it if you want a 3d part you can just take a look at it and design a modification of the 3d part easily so it's like I said it's joy to to, to play with and expect FPV uh, car write-up how to make FPV car uh, from out of it uh, quite soon I'll be this uh, you know covering this process what else what else uh, while we're here uh, well, we're gonna be here another 10 minutes so if you have any questions guys then uh, go for it let me know what did you buy did you buy anything I'm like personally black black Friday it used to be more exciting when it was just a one day I think then they've added the Cyber Monday which was like you know all the tech stuff but then the tech started to have promotions on Fridays and now we have an entire week and it's all watered down and uh, it's just been after 11 11 it feels like every week there is the same sale so I don't even feel like shopping especially on these dates uh, and it's it's just I don't think it's as exciting I don't know how you feel if the Black Friday promotions they last a week right now and kind of like yeah well <laughs> If you can condense it to one day and give me a decent promotions that are not being, you know, all over the place, then it's great. Uh, so, what uh, lowest price in 48 hours? Let's have a look what's on Banggood. What what else I can recommend from UK? Obviously, this this project is going to disappear now when I'm going to click on uh, UK. So I'm clicking on UK. Let's have a look what I could get. If I'm going to find something, we're going to shop together, right? So let's uh, put me somewhere here and let's take a look what we could do Ender V3 209 that's not a great price uh, for promotion I've seen it for hundred and ninety dollars before uh, 90 oh that's uh, no, no, no actually this is dollars it's 170 okay that's not too bad let's switch to the currency I understand <laughs> so I can at least tell which which promotion is like okay 158 that's a good pr like honestly guys that's a good price this is if you wanted an ender tree uh, ender tree this is a good price the for the version 2 uh where is it uh, ender 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 v2 here you go there is a link for you uh and this was for ender 3v2 so uh, what, what, okay, so ship ships from UK. That's new. But what happened to my? Cannot okay. Free shipping, one week delivery. That's nice. Ah, see, <laughs> you see, I am I am being shafted in here because it's one hundred and fifty-eight for European people, ship from Czech Republic. Ah, uh, it's it's so bad to be me. All right, let's have a look what else we we could uh, we could see on on the default deals, and then we uh, up uh, sixteen. This is a uh, hundred twenty six pounds. It's a little bit expensive because the the other one is much more cheaper. But this is sixteen channels. You have a lot of channels on here. This is uh, something I'll never need to use really. This is for people that fly some complicated machines. <laughs> um. But let's let's look what else. Why? Well, maybe I'll buy then something from phones. Ever since I've got Mi Eleven, I'm kind of not tempted with anything. Uh, Mi Eleven is a really good phone, and uh, honestly, the if you ever wanted to buy a Mi uh, Eleven, go for Lite. It's much cheaper and offers you a lot of uh, good features for your for your money. So that's why I think about it. Uh, a friend of mine bought this, and uh, she's completely happy with it. Uh, what else we have in here interesting 326 not a bad price is this a European version or Chinese version let's have a look um... no this is this is the Chinese version this is the one I have now Oh, this is a this is actually a good price. This is a because this one was usually over four hundred pounds, and I can 
get it from Hong Kong, which is okay. And this is the one with the Google uh, services, so you can load uh, YouTube and everything without sideloading it. So uh, it's, a, it's a not a bad price for, for this. And I still use this. I, I honestly, I use this every... Am I camera? No. No, it's fine. Uh, I use this every evening to watch something before bedtime and it's such a great little projector. Honestly, for that price, it's one of the best purchases. If you ever wanted to have a bedroom uh, projector, uh, this is perfect. The sound is awesome from this. You don't even have a separate, you don't need to have a separate sound system. Uh, the throw distance ratio is decent. Anything from like two and a half meters and you're gonna have, uh, I think, 100 inches on. It's 1080p, but honest, honestly, unless you're playing a big scale movie with a nice audio, 1080p is still all right. Uh, so yeah, I have a full review on that uh, on here. P. So if you want to read the review of it, uh, even though this is a Chinese version, so you're not going to have a problem with a uh, Google Play services, but it's, it's a, uh, usually the, the European version is much more expensive, so it's not a bad deal for this uh, projector. Uh, what else do we have interesting in here? Uh, DJI goggles, uh, they're quite pricey. They're nice goggles, but quite pricey. I wanted to try the DJI, uh, but look at the price, it's 900 pounds, so it's like I can't really spend that much money on a drone. Uh, unless DJI wants to sponsor me. So what else? Mi Band, Mi Band 6, 28 pounds, that's a good price. That's honestly, that's, uh, if you, if you were, uh, if you were looking for it, then uh, that's that's a really good price and I'll give you a nice link. Here you go, uh, this one. I hope, is this link working? Oh, this link's not working. Can I just generate the link for you guys? Uh, that'll be nice, there you go. Uh, no, nah, wrong link. Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Here. Excellent. Uh, Ah, oh, it's too long. I, I need to shorten it. Sorry. Uh, I need to shorten the link for you. Otherwise, it's uh, the chat has limits on how um, how long the link can be. the six. There you have it. Mm. Band six. So that's a not, that's a good deal. I think I remember it was forty two on start when it was released. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, some tools, nothing in particular. Some clothes, nothing in particular. There was a coffee machine I've shared. Uh, if you if you go to my Not Enough Tech uh, website, I had 17 items to check this Black Friday. Well, and a couple of good ones in here. So there was on Banggood ah this coffee maker. This one. I like coffee. I have uh, coffee with the Irish cream inside. And it was really nice. And this is something. Uh, 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 this is something I want to treat myself to for Christmas. I always wanted to have a proper coffee machine, and uh, I think I'm willing to try this and with a coffee grinder. The price is just great, and I think it's going to be a sale on Christmas, and that's why I'm going to reconsider. Uh, and I'm willing to give it a try, especially if you're going to go. Uh, check this out, Curis. If you if you're okay, you know what Curis is. If you're not in the UK, uh, this is uh, this is where you get your electronics from. Coffee. Now I'll tell I'll tell you that okay, the quality might be it's going to be a different brand, but there is a very similar. Ah, look at this one. Was it this one? I think I was looking at. Yeah. So. 
I mean, I mean, guys, this is 540, right? I like coffee, but maybe not that much. That's 800 for similar. That's 400. Right, even the cheaper version, like a different brand, 440 quid, and it's coffee grinder and this uh, uh, frapper for the milk. Uh, it's just if you want to buy a coffee machine, I think that's going to be working just fine. I have a couple of uh, Blitz Home products are basically Blitz, uh, those are products ordered by Banggood. So they're a different brand underneath it. They re uh, labeled as a Blitz Home or Blitz Wolf, and that's it. And I had a couple of products from them before, and they like decent products honestly I have no problem with it uh, with with obviously with the stuff like the long or something you're paying for the marketing and brand and uh, uh, but considering that uh, Banggood has a decent support right now and uh, I had a couple of returns done on my private accounts fine I honestly have no problem ordering stuff from them and I do it on a regular basis and uh, feels like I might have a coffee coffee maker for Christmas <laughs> that's the plan what else do we have in here? Uh, now they're gonna display me all the coffee makers because I've clicked on it. Ah. Uh, I always wanted to see, because you see this, uh, this is a very small projector, right? It has a very attractive price. Now, this is not 1080p resolution. It can handle 1080p in terms of playing, playback, because I already checked this. Uh, but it's not native 1080p. Uh, it, 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 what? It is not. I've checked it. It was not native 1080p. Have they changed something? Okay. So brightness. This is 200 ANSI, but that was not ANSI. No, that's ANSI. So DLP was 350. The one I've used, so this is slightly dimmer, so you have to use it in at that at night. But honestly, if this has, does it really have a 1080p? Because I remember checking on that. Let's have a look. Hmm. Okay, I've changed my mind then, because I remember. If, when it first released, it was it was a small one. I think this is an upgraded version then, and I've missed something. Yeah, T2 Max, uh, the first one that came out. Uh, this is not a Xiaomi one. That's why I've missed. The one was uh, from Xiaomi. I thought that was the one from Xiaomi. I didn't even read it. It was the one from Xiaomi, which was small. Uh, the difference between Ali and Banggood? Uh, yeah, well... Uh, AliExpress is the Western version of Alibaba. Alibaba is like Amazon for West. No, it's wrong. Alibaba is very unique. I've been to China a couple of times and uh, my wife did a PhD on Alibaba. And Alibaba is um, basically a really cool concept and I wish we had something like this in, in Europe. Alibaba takes uh, started as a way to connect merchants uh, together, but they were merchants uh, on a factory level. So if you wanted as a store to find a supplier of, let's say, pencils, uh, the factory of pencil would have been on Alibaba and it would say like, hi, we can supply you with pencils and they would uh, give you different deals. Now, uh, each listing on Alibaba would be individual company with their own stuff. So it was, it was opened when companies didn't really have a means so there was no technology behind it to create your own stores uh, online. This, that was just building up. It was, you know, uh, early 2000s when this started. So that was just built, the, you know, it was very rare for a shop or factory to have their own uh, online outlet. And Alibaba provided them with a very easy way to uh, log in, create a page for themselves and list the products they want to sell. They weren't selling the product as such, but Alibaba was in charge of the fulfillment so, and it was resolving disputes. And that, that basically blew up massively. Like Amazon is that tiny <laughs> comparing to what Alibaba is capable of. And up until 
today they still do the same thing when they allow merchants, the manufacturers, the, everyone basically register and be uh, directly draw the purchases from the manufacturing side. Now you'll often find on Alibaba, on Alibaba that those purchases are much cheaper but you'll have to order like a thousand pieces of I don't know a gimbal or a thousand pieces of cameras. That's where, what they're doing and you can buy anything from heavy machinery to create spaceships or whatever to, to a pencil maker. Now then things escalated obviously and they started to trade internationally and this is where AliExpress came. AliExpress is basically Alibaba slimmed down for Westerners. Allows you, it works in the same way as Amazon. So there's AliExpress and there are AliExpress fulfilled stores and private stores that uh, basically work on the ratings. So if you have a good store with a good rating, uh, they will handle everything the, as a store and Alibaba will provide you with a um, place to purchase, uh, search, etc. Now they will step in if you have a dispute. So if you have a dispute, they'll do the same as Amazon, they'll provide with a customer service. And if your merchant wasn't uh, happy, you know, uh, or if your merchant wasn't uh, truthful, they will resolve this and they will have the ability to refund your purchases, etc., etc. So they'll sort a dispute for you. Uh, and in that regard, it, Alibaba, uh, Alibaba, AliExpress works like Amazon. In, so you know, on Amazon, you have Amazon stuff that is stored by, by uh, Amazon warehouses, etc. Uh, and you have private uh, stores that are basically Amazon fulfilled, etc. And they can either store the goods in Amazon warehouses or they handle them themselves. Now, Banggood, it's a very similar, it's a competing company and it's a very similar prin uh, principle where they gathering, uh, they gathering stores together but also provide a means of de uh, delivering this on a short notice. So this is why you have uh, um, warehouses in different countries because what they do is they look at what people are purchasing and get those things to warehouses in different countries so you can get them delivered within a week not two or three weeks and that way when they sh they have those companies in you they have a different custom duties to pay so you often don't pay extra because that it was already included in goods and this is why I get shafted right now because if something is already in a U European warehouse and I want to buy it in UK right now this item paid the duty to get to European Union and now to get it out of the European Union and send it to me <laughs> they need to apply the duty again and even though I would, if I was happy to apply this duty they basically need to put extra work for us into this item so they'll add you know a price of this item and they decrease the margins that's why they, they basically don't bother with uh, sending stuff to UK unless it's directly from China and yeah, and they handle stuff directly like Amazon. So basically you have a store in there, you can sell on, on, on Banggood, but also Banggood provides the dispute center. So they will handle the customer support, they'll handle and make sure that you are happy with the products that is advertised on, the, on, on that store. And they also have uh, now brands that they um, look after so Blitz um, Blitzwolf was um, one of the brands that they basically they purchase stuff probably from Alibaba <laughs> maybe I don't know but they have contracts with factories that deliver them stock items that have been designed and uh, you know you slap the slap their um, their name on on the item now you, I bet you that you can find similar items on AliExpress from a different um, from a different uh, company but it doesn't mean that uh, the items being uh, sold is fake what they do ip has a very uh, china has a very uh, different uh, policies in terms of preserving ip basically in order to dispute any ips uh, in uh, in china you have to go through chinese court and chi chinese court basically don't really give a damn if the ip isn't broken outside of the china be uh, because they don't care so you, that's why you end up with fake iPhones in China. That's why you f uh, end up with uh, cars that looks like European cars, and no one, no one's bothered because Chinese courts will never rule in favor of uh, those companies because they protect the manufacturing. It's very important for Chinese people to protect their own manufacturing business. But that leads to the point where there is a design that is, it's not open source, but it kind of is. So let's say we have this coffee maker, right? And someone is making this coffee maker, and so it's like. We are the factory, we are selling this coffee maker. 
and you can uh, buy this coffee maker from us and we'll make it with your logo. And they'll also say, go to a different person and say, like, we are making this coffee maker. And they'll offer the same deal and then you'll end up with exactly the same design, exactly the same product with two different company logos on it. And the companies will be responsible for providing customer support, for handling returns and refunds and everything else. And that's why you often look uh, through AliExpress or, or, or Banggood and you, you see those products that are like, oh, I've seen this one and it was from a different brand. And you think like, so there's a different name, does it mean it's fake or something? No, it's just one of those quirks where, because the IP isn't protected in the same way as it is on the West, they explore the manufacturing part of it, where Chinese are very good at manufacturing stuff on a very cheap level. It doesn't mean that you get, uh, you know, cheap stuff all the time. It means that they will be able to manufacture something quickly to a high standard, to a high volume, but the QC is often lacking because they don't invest as much, and that's what results in us getting sometimes stuff that doesn't last very long, and that's the biggest problem. You can like, you can get really decent goods in China, and <laughs> let's face it, whatever the the same factories that manufacturing iPhones, not maybe not iPhones because they're gonna have a specifically Foxconn specifically manufacturing iPhones, but the same companies that manufacture chips for Samsung or uh, they do off the cut stuff for different companies with a different, uh, you know, um, quality control. So that's why they are cheaper, there's less rejections, but you also the fault rate is higher. And very often you get the same stuff, but it's just, like I said, there is no marketing budget behind it, the QA, it's lacking. And uh, uh, yeah, that's that's what happens. And uh, it's I know it's uh, difficult to kind of look at those things and say like, hmm, that sounds dodgy as hell, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's their strength, it's the ability to take a product and figure out the cheapest way to manufacture it without compromising the quality too much. It, quality gets compromised, unfortunately, but uh, it's it's how it works, how how they make stuff, and then you're gonna have another company that's like, you know what, we can manufacture it if, even, even more cheaper than the other company, and you'll end up with a similar looking thing being, I don't know, 10% cheaper. <laughs> That's and that's the story to China. Like I said, China, uh, it was uh, one of the conversations that I had with a friend of mine, which is uh, marketing director of uh, PCB Way in Hangzhou. Uh, I was talking about hack spaces and how hack spaces aren't really a thing in China. And when I asked ah, why, he said that people aren't driven like maybe you know youngsters nowadays. Yes, but. People aren't driven to make things. People are driven to manufacture things. And this is why all those companies, if they want to make stuff at volumes, they, they say, hey, China, can you make uh, 10 millions of this in the next two months? And it's going to be 10 different companies killing for that contract in China. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the same company making all those Western products that you see on the shelves and uh, the, the knockoffs that you see on uh, AliExpress, it's going to be the same roof making these. It's going to be just the different processes, QAs and etc. But yeah, but people go to engineering in China to manufacture things, not to design. Uh, this landscape obviously changes and it's not a, you know, ultimate rule, but uh, you have to, you have to think about manufacturing as an uh, ongoing process, right? Everyone that's uh, studying right now in, to get into a designing stage of things and you know they're going to be making it in the next five to ten years rather than now because they're just learning they need some experience which they're going to get on the manufacturing side and uh, but majority of people that's already go through engineering uh, degrees and stuff like that those were already focused on on the manufa on manufacturing so that's 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 a, a brief a brief take on China, which is very simplified and it's get more complicated than that is. But uh, it kind of that's how I was told uh, to kind of make sense out of it. So I hope you got to take a thing or two out of it. So yeah, um, enough of me blubbing. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna buy anything else. I've spent a bit of money. Uh, this week, I spent more money than I would like to admit. <clears throat> I'll be I'll be totally honest. But uh, there is a reason for that. There's some really cool stuff is coming, and I can't wait. And like, 
one of these. So um, expect small changes, cool changes, and uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I don't want to talk about it just yet because I want to have it as a small surprise. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I've been quiet for the last two weeks because my work been extremely busy. I have a I'm, I'm a project lead on a on a project that is uh, causing a lot of problems right now and. After days of work, I'm going home and it's like, oh, my brain is just not working. I, uh, and only this week I started to get on top of the things. And uh, yeah, it's, so I'm going to get back to writing and I have like 10 different articles started uh, halfway through for this week. And uh, Why would you choose mode one, right, right hand throttle uh, mode? Uh, um, it's uh, Vlad, uh, I think it's a preference. Honestly, I don't think it's it's anything there. Uh, uh, for this controller, uh, I have it on this side. To to be fair, I didn't have a say in which controller I'm getting because uh, I just I have a list of that, uh, items I could receive uh, from Banggood and I've just clicked on that saying like, okay, this and this will be fitting. So it's, uh, I don't know what's gonna work for me yet, uh, whether I like it. This is one of the reasons I've uh, listed in the chat uh, this converter. Uh, where is it? Uh, not this one, not this one, this, no. Yeah, where was it? Or this, this one. So it's only seven, uh, it's only seven pounds I've ordered this. And you can get either throttle direction, I went for direction one, which is, uh, the one that pings back, so it's self-centering one, right? I went to get a second one, and you can just swap this one if you want. This way I can either just put this one here, or have any configuration I want. And uh, I did that because I don't know which one I'm going to use and uh, feel f the best with. I'll just experiment. And I don't think there is a, a right answer. Like some people will say like, yeah, yeah, this is the best way. Maybe. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. It's something I'll probably get used to certain schematics and it's very likely that's going to be the same um, controlling scheme from uh, Battlefield 3 helicopters because this is basically where I think my memory in terms of controlling stuff going to come in. Uh, and I'll just continue with this because, yeah, you can be expert in flying, but uh, un uh, unless you're sitting next to me for the next couple of hours, which no one's going to do, uh, I'm gonna just learn the, you know, what works for me, and uh, I would. I'll, if you uh, you already if you're already flying in mode two, it's great. I don't like I said, I don't think it's any of the modes is superior or what. It's just I gonna I gonna try this, and if it works for me and I don't crash, then <laughs> success. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the stuff. I think uh, uh, the same controls, like right now the control scheme I have is the same I have on my Femi. Uh, on my Femi drone I have, this is, uh, so this is pitch, so pitch down, pitch up. Uh, this one's a direction, so your left and right. And uh, my roll, roll is here and uh, my uh, throttle is here and this is the same uh, this is the same mode i'm using on this obviously uh, on the other controller i have a self-centered ones and that's why i got the self-centered second one so i could feel whether i want to have the fixed one or self-centered and see which one works better for me uh but like i said it's it there is there is no science behind it it's just i it's something i figure out that might be good like i said it's seven pounds I think I already know that <laughs> I already know that this controller or this one for throttle is absolutely rubbish for cars. So for cars, you need to have the one that centers itself for throttle. Otherwise, it's so horrible to. This is how I smashed my car basically. <laughs> so yeah, uh, to get to get one of uh, get one of these if you're gonna go for fly sky controller, and uh, it's well supported. This controller, I have to say, it's uh, it's it's not. Uh, how much is the controller itself on its own? I think it's about 60 quid or something. No, 37. That's not a bad. That's a, that's a good price. Honestly, that's a, this is a good price. So if you want to, and that comes with a receiver as well. Honestly, this is a really good price. I'll give you, I'll give you a link for this. 
Um, O, oh, thank you, smart Nidom. Dziękuję bardzo. Za, za, będzie na pewno więcej niż jedna kawa. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, uh, on both, uh, speaking of the drone, uh, speaking of the drone, the Femi one, you, you can swap it. It's, it's customizable. I think, I think you have four or six controlling schemes and uh, some are bindable and some are just the schemes. So you can swap it, and like I said, it's I only got I only get the certain way of controlling things because I'm used to from playing Battlefield games, and that's that's all my flying experience. Battlefield and Arma games. So I was initially flying with uh, uh, dual sticks on PlayStation, and uh, this is where I kind of figure out what's the best way to aim at things and shoot at things. Uh, I'm, I'm sure like. Drone pros will tell me 10 different reasons why not to do this, but uh, it's uh, Honestly it, it, Just don't listen to anyone if something feels great for you. Just just continue with it. It's it's Whatever advice anyone will gonna give you it's advisory by default <laughs> If something works for you, there's no reason to change it And that was the one of the reasons why I didn't uh, um, didn't get on board with uh, Home Assistant because no red works for me, <laughs> so don't change it. But there is one thing I want to share with you guys. Uh, today I received this. Uh, let me change the camera. Today I received this, and uh, this is. I don't know, can we focus on this camera? I'll read it. Uh, wireless tag. Uh, so it's a. Is it called Zigzag Zigstar? It's a new coordinator. Zigstar, and it comes with a uh, adapter. So I, I, like I don't know, like there are two boards. This one has a wireless internet. This one has. Is that just a Wi-Fi only? I, I just got this. I didn't even read this. Uh, the person that makes this uh, asked me in an email a couple of weeks ago if I want to have it to compare it, and I said like, yeah, it's gonna be good because I have already Zigbee one and I have the. Uh, the late, sorry, the Zigbee, I have a Erectorama one and I have the son of one that I kind of uh, made people aware that it's not working as great and I really wanted this to work. So I, I want to see if new firmware on these ones going to be working a little bit better and that way uh, um, maybe a run again comparison of these. I have also 11 different temperature sensors that I'm going to be comparing together. So you could pick the best sensor for your household and a couple of other things that I really need to get doing. And actually my home automation is not working right now. I have no, I only have automation in my kitchen because uh, a couple of reasons. Um, Things happened and my home automation is not working basically. But one of the reasons I'm not very keen on fixing it straight away because I'm waiting for these. I finally got uh, order. So these are TVRs. Uh, they quite, you can see here, this one has the batteries in it. If I click on it, it'll light up. So that's the temperature inside my room right now. Uh, it's definitely not 13 degrees. <laughs> it's uh, it's been next to the window. My window is uh, no. so basically. But these are control individual radiators, and I have 11 radiators, which means I need 11 of them at least. Well, I need maximum if 11, but I need a couple of them. And my smart system, my smart home system uh, that I'm using. Uh, which is, which is, do they have the uh, DIY smart? So, my smart system is already, you see this, it's already have an option to support, kind of support these. It, they don't, they don't mean driven by my system just yet, 
but uh, I have the ability to tell which room has the temperature higher than the one you've set and the temperature lower. So in here they are in orange, which means the temperature of each room is higher uh, than the temperature or set in here. If they turn gray, it's lower. On and based on that, I can control individual radiators already. Now, I want a script that will also uh, let me prioritize. I already can use Alexa to set uh, temperature of the specific room and track the temperature of that room. So if I'm going to say to my speaker that I want to set my temperature to, 10 deg to 20 degrees in the office, then uh, my speaker will on my heating system will prior uh, will make sure that the temperature of this room will be reached and it'll do automatically all i have to do is say it from this room because i have a room uh, that the spe amazon speaker in every room which means if i'm gonna say that in office it will set the temperature for office and make sure that the office temperature is um, traced if i do it in a kitchen it'll do it for the kitchen now next step for this year i really wanted to do it was to make profiles in which it will start sending all the heat to the room that was invoked and then uh, using like a priority or I don't know how I'm going to solve that yet but using a, some sort of system it will be delivering heat to other rooms in a specific order keeping rooms that I use the least uh, cold so I use less energy to heat the rooms that I'm in and that's going to have especially a mode and that's going to trace who's home. So I already have a profile which uses Wi-Fi. It's a very simple one, but it uses Wi-Fi to tell who is home, right? And uh, I want to use that data because it will, within working hours, will tell who is home and who needs to have a heating into which room. And then when you set the temperature, it will just close off the rooms that I'm not being used. And this is where these coming in because that's how you have to do it. But the problem was because of the shortages of components and stuff not being generally available, I purchased two of them and they were sent to me, but nine more were, or the order of nine was canceled. It was canceled four times on me. So four times I've made, uh, I bought these, then waited two weeks. They failed to ship. They refunded my money. Then I waited until it's back in stock. I've ordered another nine and I went through this dance four times before they actually shipped another nine. So now they are on the way. They should be here before Christmas. And I need to get a guy to drain my uh, radiators because I don't have compatible valves as well. <laughs> so I need to put compatible valves on my radiators <laughs> to even make them work. And then I'll write the software that's going to be uh, controlling this. So that is the plan. Uh, so, and that was the reason I've shown you that uh, um, this, um, what is it called, thermostat, because I, <laughs> my thermostat, honestly, my thermostat, uh, my thermostat still looks like a, a explosive device because it's just a son of bolted with some, do I have it? Hold on, I have a picture of it. Believe me, I have a, where's the, yeah. this one has a picture of it. <laughs> it still looks like this with tape and everything. <laughs> for, for three years now, it's been like this. And uh, I kind of grown, you know, I'm used to this now. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I need to replace this because this is getting silly. It's supposed to be a, uh, you know, temporary solution, but it still looks like it. So. Uh, if I am able to talk to it properly and update the values via Zigbee, via coordinator, then I I'm going to replace this. Because initially I thought this is just a display unit, but actually if you're going to go at uh, the description of this, you'll see it has a different control. So uh, here's what it is. This is dry contact. Dry contact one is for... A boilers that have a signal so it connects this connects to a 220 or 110 depending on your location right and uh, it has a dry contact so you can have 12 volts in here and it closes and opens it all right and uh, 
This one is for floor heating or heaters or anything that you power directly via load. So you have a positive and negative that's being drawn from here and it's 16 amp limit. So this is for something that actually takes the power and use that power, uses that power to provide the heat. So something like your electric heater, right? And this is the one I use, uh, which basically has a small signal, which is uh, AC signal. And it's either normally open or normally closed, depending on your configuration. So if you, uh, uh, if you want to um, control uh, something that is like, like mine, like this. <laughs> this is a 30 year old thermostat, by the way, that's been fitted in this house. This house is 29 years old. And it took me five, initially it took me $5 to automate it and make it available via uh, home speakers. So I was really proud of it. And it started like, no, it was just, it was just this. There was nothing else. I could just do it via mobile phone. And then with all the iterations, it got to the point where, it, like, I don't even use this. Like, I hardly even use this other than for, like, showing off. Because it's so comfortable to say, like, hey, uh, speaker, set the temperature to this. And I know that the temperature is going to be set for this room and it will be kept for this room and the other rooms will catch up on their own as, as soon as, as they can. And this room will never overheat. So if I'm in a smallest room, then the heat heating cuts in quicker. If I'm in a big room, then obviously the smallest room have excess of heat because I don't have these <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, and I couldn't cut off the heating early. But now the challenge is going to be just, uh, you know, uh, make a script that as well as controlling this, it will guide the whole heating into uh, into saving mode. So you will cut off like I have two bathrooms. I, I don't need a second bathroom to be hot until evening. I don't need it because one bathroom I use for bathroomy thingies and the other bathroom has a really nice posh shower, the new shower with some proper pressure, not the crap pressure in my primary bathroom. So that's the bathroom I'd like to keep warm in the evening when I'm taking a shower. So there's absolutely no point of sending the heat whatsoever until like 7 p.m. And Stuff like that, it's gonna, I think it justifies it. I'm gonna spend, on the whole conversion, I'm going to spend 180 pounds on, it's 200 more because they're two here. So about 200 pounds on these, because I need 11. And uh, another 50, 50 to 80 pounds on valves. So that's 300 something and then I need to pay the guy because uh, in the summer I probably would risk doing it myself but it's a heating season right now and if I'm gonna bleed the heaters myself I don't want to be in a situation where I can't do the valve or I'm not having proper tools and I don't have a heating for three days so I'm gonna pay someone to do it uh, but yeah but uh, it's gonna be about 400 pounds in total to get this done and uh, when you think about it, this might be expensive, but considering to what happening with the gas prices in UK right now and uh, heating is going to be a very sensitive subject, I think if the gas prices and everything continues, uh, it's well, it's going to be a good investment and they will return that investment quicker than, than, than I would expect otherwise. So this is my justification behind it. So, yeah. And then you, even if you move houses or something, you sell your house, you can still take this with you. So yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the plan for it, guys. Oh, there is a one, there is also one more thing that this is, <laughs> this is a cool little item, right? Uh, if you're looking for a project that's going to up your uh, soldering game, and this is an item I found on Banggood, so let's, uh, let's go, I'll, I'll send you a link, hold on a sec. I've actually, if you follow, if you follow me on, uh, social media, you will know what that is. Uh, it's this one. Ah, wrong button. So I bought it myself. Uh, let's open this. So it looks cool in the picture and it actually looks cool on uh, in real life as well. I'll show you the uh, video of it. 
I'm not going to connect. Uh, not going to connect it now. Uh, I'm gonna borrow this. Da, da, da. So this is uh, responding to me talking. Uh, and I've connected certain things the other way around and it wasn't working. But now it works brilliantly. Well, link in the description of this tweet. Well, so, this yeah, is that's actually the, quite... Um, it does a lot of different things, including like... Uh, time and stuff like that and uh, it's uh, it's adorable uh, but it is a kit which means what you get is um, uh, what you get is the stuff like this to solder <laughs> this is 320 LEDs <laughs> to so hand sold uh, to S SMD LEDs that I needed to solder with 300 something uh, capacitors to do which was a adventure can see this uh, um, being built and uh, this working with Arduino right now uh, for testing. I also abused it quite a lot uh, to the point when I probably made some mistakes uh, because you have to make the board itself. So uh, see, this is this is what it looks like when you get it. Uh, I was using my hot plate, a mini hot plate, uh, which I got from Miniware. It's brilliant for this work, honestly. Yeah. Uh, mini hot plate 30 it's called so I was using this hot plate uh, which is perfect for this so basically that was my first soldering um, experience with SMDs and even though like <laughs> you will notice if you get this kit uh, don't don't have this picture in your in your brain because this is the orientation hole and because I was doing it in a poor lighting conditions I used that as my orientation hole and uh, yeah I've, uh, for like two days I was trying to figure out what is not working in total I reflowed this uh, IC about three or four times uh, to make it work uh, if I do it properly the first time it would be easier but uh, yeah it, it's it's been great fun and I uh, learn over the time what you um, what sort of skills SMD requires and actually I thought it's going to be more fragile than it is and uh, it's quite forgiving so if you're looking into getting SMD soldering or trying to fix SMD stuff kits like that are really good even though it's tedious at times uh, you learn stuff and I have to say after the soldering those uh, 320 LEDs in particular on the matrix itself uh, I kind of developed a bit of a patience to 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 do this. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, I know how much uh, paste you're supposed to add, and I was just dipping it in a, with a screwdriver because syringes weren't the greatest. The, the screwdriver trick is the best, and this is basically the hot plate, the hot plate in action. You can get it in a long bit as well, and uh, yeah, you just dip it in a. Uh, in a paste, uh, a couple of dots on all of the paste, then put it on a on a hot plate. The hot plate should be set for that for about 250 to 270. Works quite good uh, from my. And you don't have to even orient the LEDs well; they gonna pop in place. It's very satisfying to watch when they shift into position because of the tension of the hot solder. You can see this traveling slightly. So yeah, I, uh, so my next step is to change the way it displays stuff and uh, have it so it's uh, apart from the clock and stuff, it will also display um, is it? apart from the clock uh, and uh, responding to music you will also display uh, in here my subscription stat statuses so my youtube uh, twitter facebook following uh, and then a return to a clock and then it will respond to voice commands uh, where from my amazon echo so when i say show play music you will start displaying music um, equalizer on, on the display and the way I'm going to do it is just I'm gonna have a ESP inside or Arduino I don't know which one I'm going to go with yet and then 
uh, it will just disable the main driver by cutting off with the transition, uh, transistor cutting off the input from uh, from the IC built in and override it and display stuff on the matrix. So yeah, that's that's kind of stuff I was kind of enjoying making it, even though it was tedious at times. But it's a good practice, especially that I uh, I might be doing some some of that work, uh, some of um, like fixes as SMD work at at work as well. So it's a it's a good practice for me. So I did enjoy it. Oh. Yeah, I'm supposed to finish like 40 minutes ago and I kind of dragged, <laughs> dragged over. So if you just joined a quick recap for you guys, we were playing with cars, RC cars, and I was able to chase the car for a bit. There's a video of uh, on here driving and uh, me. Oh, that was a drone, sorry. Ah, I went full screen. I didn't want to full screen. So that was me trying to chase it with a, a drone, which wasn't the best. But uh, the best f uh, the best bit of it of the car fun uh, is here. Just needs to come on. Ah, so that was me running behind it, and so then I said like throttle up all the way, and it's uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't run that fast. <laughs> uh. And. I'm looking forward to adding Arduino and accelerometer to it and uh, try to use the accelerometer to display the braking and data. Well, you can, another thing you can actually do is it's completely possible. You can get that data from accelerometer. And uh, once you have a VR headset, uh, VR, like the, the, it's not VR, but once you have it, you could project the data, speed, automata, or whatever onto it because it supports this. So you can actually, send that data to your uh, headset and you can have an overlay and the plan is to, to like i said to 3d print the interior so it will look like uh, driving a car in a game uh, but yeah the other video the other video i had was was here why does it uh, does it go full screen instead so yeah so basically, this is me just playing with it. You can see that uh, you can have so much fun without it. And another thing you could do, you can actually try to do your traction control system as well. Uh, you could uh, use accelerometer and measure when you lo you're losing traction and uh, and what's the expectation, you know, what the expected acceleration is. Uh, with a traction on, when you have a traction and when you don't uh, have a traction. And you could use that to slow down the acceleration and have a kind of like a very primitive traction control. So you could you could actually learn quite a bit of, and th that's challenging, this is a challenging math and uh, the way of doing it. And I'll be writing uh, information how to use Arduino to, to transfer the data from sticks. So you could use it in your code and do something fun. Like I said, like, uh, uh, do I have, Hold on, I have a video. So I've mentioned that at work, we have a group of people that are modding those cars. They have smaller cars, so I went for a big one so I could have more space. But we have a group of people that uh, mod these cars. And, uh, let's, let's show you. So I'm, I'm super jealous. I'm super jealous because their cars looks like this. Correct. Oops. Correct. Correct. You can see the you see the lights and stuff like Correct. that. Those are afterthoughts of front and backlight are already Correct. added. And they have uh, instead of shells, they have 3D printed bodies. Uh, and it looks so not like this is another car. Go. Without it. Go. That uses actually the same controller that I have. Go for driving, and it has a different uh, suspension through printed. But yeah, it started as a as a car, and that's that. That is my plan to make my car look like this. Plus, have a clear windscreen in here. Put the camera and some, like I said, three D print and paint the dashboard. So when you're driving it, uh, it looks like you're inside the car. 
and you with the shells you don't get all of that you you see even the lights like this i can just steer and i can drive them based on my acceleration or, or input from the uh, controller because i'm gonna have six channels and it can look absolutely stunning you can even have a smoke machine inside <laughs> so yeah it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of things that you can uh, uh, learn from a project like that this is not your uh, you know yeah, it's a RC toy and you can think about it as a toy, but like nine, in 90s, if you had a car like this, it would be a toy. Don't get me wrong. Making anything out of this toy would be extremely difficult because you wouldn't, you wouldn't have access to anything like Arduino. You wouldn't have access to, you know, all those electronics. You would have to have a specific knowledge about the creating integrated circuits uh, or, or to, 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 to make modifications. And now we can take those simple toys and play with them because we have access to all those electronic components we can have development boards you want to have an ip camera uh, ip camera streaming over wi-fi it's going to take you 10 minutes to set up just put a raspberry pi in at the camera download the code from internet and suddenly you have a ip camera stream via wi-fi and you can even control that via wi-fi and it's not going to be even that difficult project and that's why i'm saying like if you look at these cars as an um, if you look at these cars as a toy, that's fine. It's, it's still a toy, it's a fun toy to have. But as a robotics project, this is great because there's so many things you can do. Uh, like I said, you can learn 3D design and how to design 3D models for bodies. You can read, you can look at the manual, which will, like I said, it's a very, very detailed, very detailed manual that basically shows you how the differentials Ah, this, this camera, because it's in a face uh, tracking mode, I need to disable it. So it's a very detailed schematics of, of the car, showing you how it works, how the differential works on it, how the four-wheel drives works, how um, independent suspension has been done. You can change the springs to make it stiffer, you can lower the suspension. There is so many things that you can do with stuff like that from the mechanical standpoint. Uh, I've already, like I said, if you've missed the beginning of this uh, stream, I've already changed uh, the way I interact with it. So instead of using the default controller, which is I uh, had three uh, channels, but the receiver with ES, uh, ESC supported only two channels. So I've swapped the uh, receiver to be six channel support. And uh, now I can actually add more stuff to it, in including a camera that could response to head movements from this because there's a module to track the movements of this and that way i would feel like inside a car and this is an interesting project uh, the car uh, the model the link to the car i'll give you the link to the car if you want uh, so this is this is porsche 911 kind of skin but you can you can get those they're not very expensive, they're, they're, they're cheap, they're not pretty, The lack of details. Uh, it comes with uh, vinyls to print and put it on it, but I didn't even bother because I know I'm gonna, I want to make something like, uh, like this. I want to make, this is, this is custom paint, obviously, the guy spent some time polishing the, the shell and uh, the print, the printer, and this is smaller scale, this is uh, one, 128. Uh, I can find you the actual car, just give me one second. On 28 or 26? Uh, ah, why are you going full screen on me? One twenty eight, yeah it is. Uh, so this is not the same model, but this is the uh they have different bodies obviously. Uh but this is the the one that uh, they use. It's it's smaller and the link for it is So this is 128 scale. 
and uh, yeah, they still have a metal plate. They uh, the suspension is slightly different, so they have individual suspension, but there is also this suspension which suspends entire uh, this axis here. Uh, there is a metal metal body. Uh, so this one is still this one still have a vinyl. There is I think there is another one. Not sure if I can find. I know that they bought it on Banggood as well, actually. Uh, but you didn't have a. They might have. Oh, then ah, oh, this is this is the the type of uh, body they bought. So they bought a custom body which looked like like this. Slightly different, it mounts differently. Sometimes you need a custom uh, bracket to mount, but that's that's the kind of the body they got. And you can see that it has more details on it, and you can do the lights and the backlights. So my plan is to. Uh, this is what I want to do. Uh, Ah, uh, seventeen eighteen. So this is the car I'd like to do. Uh, probably this, uh, that one, or this one. This looks nice. So the problem with this one is the price. This is the price for a three D model, right? <laughs> Just for the three D model, and I know for a fact it has everything I need. Right, but I know for the fact that uh, I would have to redesign a bit to make it fit my body, to make it, uh, you know, fit what's inside, and they have same distance between axes, uh, and be done in parts. So if I crash, I only have to print, for example, let's say this part at the back, or, or just bumper at the front. So I would have to still put some work in it, and. It is it is a big price to pay and I'm looking for like the bet I don't want to spend more than 40 50 dollars on it to be honest um, I'm feeling a little bit cheap and that kind of because the good models are unfortunately quite expensive this is like like a cheaper one but you can kind of you know be able to tell that it lacks a bit of detail on it I mean it's still it's still okay I mean actually this is not a bad I could in see what we have FBX object. Uh, I think I should be able to export FBX and uh, modify it in Blender, and maybe add some more subdivisions so it doesn't feel so jagged on 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 these. As you can see, it's, a, it's lacks a bit of definition in here, and that's not going to look as nice. So it's. It's a good start, but if you want something pretty, it's quite expensive, and it, it hurts because it's expensive. But I'm actually considering to, to up my CAD game and maybe do it in CAD, and since this is a skill I always wanted to hone a little bit better. But it gives me a drive to do something. I don't have to do it for tomorrow, there is no rush, but you know, in my spare time I can open CAD and do something in for an hour or two, or do it in Blender, and design it with specification for this chassis. And then have, I have access to vacuum former, so I can have a clear glass for um, for reflectors and all lights and for the windows. Uh, I can use a dimmed one on the sides and the clear one on the front and then have a camera inside hidden and then 3D print the cockpit, uh, put some controls in it. And yeah, it's it, it, it has, a, like I said, it has a really nice size. So it gives you a lot of play to, there is, you don't have to be compact. You can put a, a five gram servo in it to control the camera. It's going to be enough space without, uh, you know, compromising, compromising the model. And that's one of the reasons I'm super excited about it. Because like I said, you can get a robotics kit. You can get a robot that follows a line, but you can do this with this. And you can have so much more fun with this because it's a RC car. It's much faster. It's quicker. It's, it's, it's more 
uh, agile and it, it's just one of the things, right? It's, it's so much nicer to, to, to play with the stuff like that. And while you're working on a, on a design, you can still use it in RC mode. And uh, while you just want to try if your program is working, you just connect the board and make a nice connector or something and, you know, have fun. So that is basically the, the, the idea behind what I'm trying to do with these cars. Like I said, and uh, throughout the winter, I'll be practicing my skills with flying a drone. So hopefully, uh, should we, do you want to, for everyone to just joining me, I was using a, uh, this controller. Let's go back. I was using this controller to fly a sim. Uh, let's, let's, you can you can you can laugh at me again if you want. Uh, this is uh, it's on sale right now. It's a DLR sim, so drone racing league simulator. It's one of one of the most more, more respected ones. And uh, yeah, uh, if you want to laugh at me, then uh, let's okay. Let's reset ourselves. So you can laugh at me. Uh, oh, the, hey, he was flying before I even started. So I'm used to flying drones that do everything for me, right? I'm in the panic mode. Too much throttle. I don't want to go up, I want to go down. Ah! See, it is hard, and this is what you get with those drones. It's uh, absolutely no support. Can I go under the wing? <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. I have a long way to go, and believe me, I can sir, I can orbit this pole with my Femi. <laughs> oh. oh, let's try this. So, what I need to do? I need to bank. <laughs> Try this again. I'll try to orbit this uh, while facing constantly. Right? That's the plan. So let's level. Pull back a little bit. Slow down. Pull back. Okay. No. So I need to bank. Why it's not? <laughs> Why? Oh, this is hard. Go get the door the way around. I'm so bad at this, guys. I'm so bad at this. Too much throttle. Ah! I thought I gonna, I gonna fit underneath it. No. Uh, another. Ah. Nice. So we can lower up uh, level. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have a long way to go. I could make this turn on Phoebe. Panic mode. Yeah, this is what I mean. If you want to have an FPV drone, you will have this for a long time. You might have a better coordination than me. But, uh... <laughs> Okay. Okay, enough of this embarrassment. Uh... Like I said, I have a long way to go, and that's why the car was on the table as well, so I could use the same controller to control the car, because it's all right. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. Uh, 
I, I, I gonna open it and see what, what is inside because it's a three channel. I know this, this is a three channel, it has that aux button in here which doesn't do anything, it doesn't turn on the lights either. Uh, so the lights are constantly on and annoying. But it's a decent controller as well, so it has a, a trim to level your steering left and right and it has a speed trim which is uh, very useful for slippery surfaces so you don't skid constantly and to your your, con your basic controllers. It's actually quite comfortable to drive this way. I find this controlling mode uh, to be pretty decent for the car. I found it so much harder to control with uh, this this controller, uh, mostly because I don't have it nailed it yet, but yeah, I'll practice more. So yeah, that is, that is the goal, guys. That is the goal. Uh, so expect soon to have a... I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a sensor under the grill that's gonna read the distance in front, right? And then if I'm about to crash something, something is like, uh, let's say less than a one and a half meter from the front, you'll automatically override and uh, apply the brakes until it stops. So I'll never crash it front. <laughs> you could do, this is the thing, you could do this because you can override this. If we're using Arduino, you can pass all the controls through Arduino first before they hit the servo and EMC. ESC and uh, that way when something else happens you can override those signals you can say no I'm not listening to controller I'm listening to sensor in front and yeah or you can fit you remember the my article about AI camera so like this camera can be powered by USB right um, do -do 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 -do. So look at this, guys, look at this. This camera has AI and I took it driving. Oh, where is it? So I mounted in a car and I took it driving, right? So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't great, but you could follow a car in front of you. So you can recognize the car in front of you and to get coordinates, you see coordinates in here of the car in front of me. I get those coordinates and basically uh, trace and follow the car automatically based on the camera input. And you could totally do this because the camera would be fixed, right, on the position. And then when the square goes to the left, you correct and go to the, uh, you turn to the left. And if the square goes to the right, you do the same. And this way you follow the car in front of you, so you could have it in a follow mode of any object that is recognized and uh, classed as an object to follow. So if you have a, you could have a cheat, like when you're racing with someone, you could have a cheat that is much better with you. You could have a cheat mode. Obviously with this camera, probably not quick enough, but uh, with something like Jetson Nano, you should totally be able to do it, where you follow the car in front and, uh, you know, if someone's much better than you, you will be constantly behind them. You just uh, add, uh, a small delay to your movement so you know it happens your turns happens more or less in the, the same distance that the car in front of you did that so there's uh, lots of interesting ways so you can things you can do with a rc car and i think like i said many many times in this live stream uh, having uh, having this kind of uh, form factor it gives you a lot of space uh, to play with so if like uh, that give you a sense of scale, where I have my ultrasonic sensors, uh, PR sensors, uh, where is my ultrasound module? You know? uh, I have a separate stuff for it. Uh, DC probe and power switches. I can never find stuff in here. Heat sinks, relays, sound modules, stamps, smoke. Jumpers, connectors, separators, sonar, yeah. So, if you wanted to put a sonar on it, basically, this is how big it is. And you could totally use it to slow the car down. It's cool as that, right? You could... Uh, Drift 2 had a zombie mode when you could totally do the zombie mode where you uh, if you get close to a car uh, You wouldn't use this you would use a, a probably 
uh, infrared or something to detect a, a diode on the back of the car. So if you get close to it in a specific angle, uh, you could play a catch with uh, with uh, the, another car. So when you bump it, and uh, you know you you automatically can have a scoring system to keep a score. So many things that you can do with RC cars nowadays because of the availability of the sensors and uh, you know being able to 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 add add stuff. It's it's fun, like I said, it's no longer a toy, it's a project and I'm super excited to play with it. My first upgrade has been done, I'll write about it a little bit more uh, uh, soon and I'll share what other things that you can do with it. So, hope you're gonna find it quite exciting. But yeah, but uh, don't worry, the home automation stuff isn't going away, I'm just waiting for these to arrive. Right, it's half past ten. Uh, I think I'll eat something because uh, I only had a quick, quick lunch and I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> I finished work and I cleaned up my room a little bit. Um, I even 3D even printed cones so I could do like tests uh, on the ground. See? That looks like a VLC icon. <laughs> that was my first like, oh this is VLC icon, this is not a cone. <laughs> but yeah, I have some, uh, I have some cones I can uh, uh, make a slalom and stuff like that and do the moose test. This is the most important test to do the moose test so you won't fail like Toyota Hilux or Mercedes uh, A180, was it? Was it Mercedes A180 that failed the moose test in the 90s, if I remember correctly. And, a four, and one of the Fords, I think, but well, it's been too long, so I don't remember. So moose test, if you don't know what moose test is, is you basically, you drive the car, at selected speed and you try to avoid obstacles so you can't use brakes all you can do is just go to one side and then correct it and return it to the lane without losing control of the vehicle and some cars flip to the side so yeah that's a moose test now nowadays cars don't have that much problem this one wouldn't have this problem because I did some sharp turns with it on the tarmac and honestly it was just very, very responsive. Do I have like a, I think I have a video, it's not a greatest video, but uh, uh, let's see. I have a bit of a video of this on my phone, uh, which is going to be in my cloud. and so forth. So I'll show you this. It's not, like I said, it's not the greatest video because I was driving and I was... Uh, this is how quickly it goes. And just full throttle. It's <laughs> basically scrubbed some uh, some stones from the tarmac as well. It's just immensely fast. Oops. Mm. One more time this way. So yeah, this is this is like twenty meters or something. So. But the other one I was trying to shoot, I was uh, holding my phone and trying to drive it, which is a bad idea. Oh, I have a... So, here. So, like I said, I'm driving with one hand, which is difficult, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to steer and... And if you want to know, <laughs> this is like, I just couldn't, <laughs> just decided to, I couldn't steer. And uh, I have a crash and a perspective from the car perspective, which is going to look quite nice. So this is from the camera mount of the car. <laughs> Didn't end well. Well, yeah, this goes. This is not full speed. This is, it wasn't even full speed in here. I don't. I must have hit something, and it kind of flipped it over when I was turning. But that wasn't even a full speed as well. So it's 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 good fun. It's good fun. Uh, so that was a shot on the uh, Insta three hundred and sixty Go uh, small camera. You could see that uh, on my previous previous video. Like, that was. It was basically this one here, right? And that's the camera is out from here, but th this is the mount stuff. And it looks pretty cool when you're driving it. So imagine having a cockpit inside and driving with a headset. Uh, it's it's gonna be absolutely amazing to 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 try out and uh, make it look like a game. Especially, you know, nothing stops you to actually connect the real uh, steering wheel 
and try to do it with uh, with this and uh, just uh, have a, like a massive transmitter somewhere like and go go driving uh, also do you have any other videos of that i don't think i have uh No, there is a open RC project. People design and print. Ah, you see, you see, guys. I knew you are a fountain of knowledge. Let's have a look. So you can basically build your RC pretty much from scratch. So you have F1 cars. So like F1 cars, I'm like, mm, no, because it's like, if there is no lights that I can add and indicators and stuff like that it's less fun i think <laughs> but uh but yeah but this is a uh, uh, this is cool especially that they have other uh do we have like uh images maybe of other stuff that they, people design so a lot of it's just a formula car so the same really design i think do they have any other bodies tractors that tractors oh this one's something different and some monstrosity this. Uh, yeah. Someone has a Batmobile. <laughs> oh, that, 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 in a way that would be cool, but uh, I think, yeah, that, that's actually, that's pretty cool. I have to say like, if you make a real model look like this, uh, fair enough, fair enough to you. Uh, but I think I'd go, like I said, I'd go for a, a, a normal car and then try to make a, a video experience interesting. That would, that's something I, I think I'd like to do. It doesn't have to be like a performance or anything. Like, we had this idea. It's, I think it's a great idea, but I don't know if I can get guys... Can I get tracking, please? I don't know if I can get a tra uh, guys on, on, on the same page. So basically, uh, we would settle for a form factor. So we settle for similar cars, so everyone has the same idea, you know, starting point. And we would have, uh, basically, um, what's it called? Uh, challenges. Every two weeks, we would have maybe ask audience or my followers to come up with a challenge. It could be a drag race, or it could be the shortest stopping distance, or the, the longest uh, jump or, or, you know, anything uh, uh, or some specific thing that the car needs to do. And you have two weeks to modify your car to suit that challenge. And you can do anything, you can spend more, lots of money on it, but you can't change the car. You can, you have to modify it, right? And then you, you basically, you make the test, you, you take the challenge and see which car performed the best. And then the winning car needs to disclose what how much they spent to you know to win this challenge and what upgrades they did and what were the difficulties i think that would be really nice to to have that sort of league when people could join with a similar spec car and try to you know each every like two to three weeks uh, meet the challenge and uh, document it and uh, reveal what they done to meet this challenge i think that would be quite interesting to to have a league like this and they don't have to obviously they would if you record a video of something, then you don't have to be in person to, to compete for the challenge. But uh, that would introduce a lot of interesting designs that people come up with uh, to, to, to share. And I think that's uh, that's that's a cool that's a cool uh, idea. Or you could, for example, have a you have to drive a car in a specific manner. So, for example, out, autonomously. So you have to develop a quick system of uh, object uh, avoidance. Could be a based on the distance sensors or camera or whatever but you have to like avoid th three boxes and take a turn or turn around and stuff like that and you can't use the rc controller uh, that would be really really cool uh, to have stuff like that and then focus and try to design around it so like i said the times where these were toys it's over they are projects <laughs> 
they also fun to drive. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm not I'm not kidding. I'm actually thinking about getting a second one because, uh, like, I want to drive this for uh, after after this day, this day on the beach. Uh, my partner was quite keen on driving one, and I think we we could we could have some fun driving both of them together, and then we could have definitely some 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 fun and challenges. So yeah. Right, I'm gonna wrap up because I've not planned this to be so long, to be honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll wrap up and I'll be working on a couple of other things uh, that I've planned for today. I still have a coffee, which is nice. Thank you to everyone for joining me tonight. It was absolutely blast and fun to talk to all of you and uh, share all of the silly things that I uh, get to play with, because that's always fun. And I hope you're gonna enjoy some of my uh, Articles about converting this and making try to make them into something that they not uh, I definitely learned quite a bit about controllers already and uh, about uh, power delivery um, Just reading up on driving inductive loads. And I never never had opportunity to do it and uh, it kind of makes more sense to me uh, and uh, Since I'm a, I have a project that involves um, De designing my own battery for for the project, then this is a great opportunity to also also read about uh, you know different battery configurations and how you uh, how you design for it, how to prevent the battery from discharging too much, etc., etc., etc. So there is a different levels of knowledge and complexity in a small thing like this, and you get to explore a lot of things that you probably haven't read about or having an opportunity to, to, to learn in depth and as with everything there is always a degree of complexity it might look it might look like as you know something simple on the outside but once you start reading there is a rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole and you suddenly find yourself uh, uh, knowing that gee if you look at something carefully enough it, it is very complicated <laughs> all right guys uh, big thanks to Banggood if you shop on them, like I said, I had no problems with them even though I do make my own personal objects, um, the personal orders on it. Uh, they always made sure that I was happy with, with everything. Uh, and yeah, if you had hesitations about shopping with them, like give them a try. It's not as scary as you think, especially if you're European Union, you're gonna find things to be much cheaper than I do on my recommendations, unfortunately I'm limited. Uh, and yeah, just enjoy yourself and find yourself a nice little project that you can work and tinker because that will keep you curious and keep your knowledge expanding. As for now, you know where to find me because you found this live stream. I do home automation. If you join me through Banggood, I do home automation and uh, lots of random stuff from 3D printing to um, to apparently flying drones and taking some sh footage and uh, designing uh, VLC cones. What is that? VLC cones in multiple uh, iterations. Uh, but yeah, but if you want to, uh, if you want to read about that, then notenoughtech.com. This is where you can find me. Big thanks to Bankut for 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 hooking my, hooking me up with the stuff so I could talk about it. And I hope you're gonna enjoy my car with first person view driving system. Yes! <laughs> I'm super excited about it. <laughs> right. Have a good night, guys. Because I will. Bye!